Why do it again? When well, I did it the first time in 2019, I did the road trip, left snow globes, put photos of it online, and that was it. But when I did that, people liked it. Then I figured, okay, a year later, I would do it again, leave snow globes again, record the whole thing, and turn it into a feature length documentary. Doesn't seem like I can go much further with that. But now two years later, turns out I realize there's a lot of opportunities to do something different. Anyway, let's get this quest started. Whole packed, ready to go. All right, I might need this helmet. Oh, I'm gonna need this. Okay, all packed and ready to go. Ready, boys? Okay, let's take off. Oh wait, I'm gonna need these. First up, Cabazon. Expect this documentary to be even more dense than the previous one. So I'm just gonna skip all the driving sequences and just get there. Turn right onto Seminole Drive. Turn left, then the destination is on your left. Dinosaurs, although the Dinky the, the Dino or Mr. Rex or just the real Dinky the Dino. Yep, that's what Novak is based on. Wow. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave this uh, special Novak snow globe between his feet. No, it's not found in the game, but this will make someone's day when they come here. Okay, here's the Novak snow globe. Scan this code to hit me up. Yeah, I'll just uh, put it under his toe claw here. Yeah, I always like under this tourist trap. I mean, it's got dinosaurs, a dinosaur tour, 
Yeah, it's just a fun stop along the road. Uh, whoa, what the? Oh, where'd this beret come from? This Burger King looks deserted. Why is it called Novak? Well, no vacancy, of course. The nearest hotels here is Morongo, Palm Springs. Ah, little known fact, their eyes light up at night. You know, Cabazon would be a fun place for a meetup. I tried that some time ago. So, you here for the meetup? <laughs> I didn't know there was one. Uh, I've been playing 76 for, I think since the start, I played the beta, uh, and I, I don't know, that that was probably the start of my love for the, the whole online. Then I played four, I played a little bit of New Vegas. I only played three for like an hour. <laughs> Thank you so much for noticing me. Mr. Rex, meet Dinky the Dino. Dinky? Meet the ice cream. Nom 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 nom. So, you get any Fallout fans? They mostly come here for Pee Wee Herman. Not a lot of Fallout fans are here. Okay, thanks. Interesting Fallout fact. When Fallout New Vegas was launched in 2020, there was a party in Las Vegas. The Kardashians, Jesse from Breaking Bad, and Wayne Newton showed up, along with who knows who else. And at the party, they had a sculpture of Dinky the Dino as well as the New Vegas sign. But what happened after that party? Where did Dinky go? Dinky the Dino was purchased by well-known collector, former neurosurgeon, and Lieutenant Governor of Nevada, Lonnie Hammergren. For now, Dinky belongs to the Hammergren estate. Further along the line, who knows where it will end up. Well, this was my uh, last stop, and when I made Lost Snow a Fallout Snow Globe road trip, that's my first stop on my third one. Next stop, Baker. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's gotta be said. Radio stations in this area, it's all just Preachy rock. I should talk to some people who worked on the game. Let's see, uh, long list here, so. The Maestro. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Max. But I'm bringing fun to the guy who gives a voice to the games itself. That's actually true. The music uh, needs to carry what we call the emotional layer of the sound. And that's what music does. Um, actually, music shines more than anything else during exploration time when you don't fight and you just, you know, going about your way and looking at the, you know, the scenery and try to soak in the game. So can this 350 something mile drive to Las Vegas be boring and tedious? It can, but growing up, I've been on so many trips to, from Las Vegas to San Diego that I've gotten used to it. Okay, currently in lovely Baker, the gateway to Death Valley. Usually when I do the Lonesome Road snow globe, I actually go to Death Valley, Amargosa. Uh, let's see, how much is gas right now? Should I go out of the way? All right, let's just settle for 
here in Baker. Thankfully, there's uh, plenty of rundown uh, places to leave a snow globe. Okay, Royal Hawaiian Motel. I uh, don't know what the deal. I don't know uh, what the story behind this place is, but rundown, graffitied. Ooh, perfect for a father location. Man. All right, no one living here. All right, and here's the Lonesome Road snow globe. Yep, looks broken. Yep, I know, this is the one my dad found in Amargosa Valley a long time ago. And is this it? No, that is not. Wait a minute, hold on. Lonesome Road. What is it, Mark? Apparently it's a snow globe. It is a funky snow globe. Yeah, almost two years ago. All right, this is for the cops show up. Okay, how about right here? Okay, someone's gonna be lucky to find Lonesome Road if they're brave enough to go in here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Good, Sunset Sasperlas with the blue star, just for good measure. Okay, let's get out of here. The world's largest, uh, tallest thermometer looks uh, different at night. Ah, get, a, get a photo of that. If you believe in something enough, you must be willing to let it burn, lest it claim you. A third snow globe road trip. A second documentary to be made. Certainly I'm making history here. Ugh. When we go to Fallout, post-apocalyptic, lots of dirt. Everything's dirty, there's destroyed, dilapidated, and there's and the people surviving, people emerging from fallout shelters, and, you know, splinter groups from the government who form their own factions who try and take, take their peace in the world. How do you compose music for this sort of world? The way I was thinking always about fallout is exactly the way you describe it. Everything is shattered to pieces. Everything is basically scrapped. And so I took this scrap and tried to make music out of that. I used um, in all the fallouts, lots of things and elements that um, I was imagining th being thrown around and took them and played and recording them and created something musical and rhythmical out of things that were not really meant to be musical instruments. This is one way for me to. The other way is actually take musical instruments, but really treat them as destroyed. And so like take piano, for example, and instead of like playing the keys, just like playing roughly on the strings or really hammering the piano or take guitar and bow it instead of you know, strum it. Wow. So it sounds like you're putting dents in your interest instruments and adding distortion. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah, well, you know, again, using everything to sort of like describe what I imagine and what I see, which is a shattered and destroyed world and people that are trying to actually emerge and you know, they need to go about their life and music is part of life. Of and since they don't have like the means to do like classical music or mm -hmm. well played music, they still have the urge in them to create something. So I took this something and this is how the sport is built. I started with fall tactics this way fallout 3 and then in new vegas i actually veered away toward something that is more twangy because as we know uh, you know yeah we are we are in sort of like the wild west by the way vegas is one of my favorite favorite games of all you know because and also the music you know there was sort of like a departure from the other because all the fallouts are 
more orchestral and classical. And in, in Vegas, everything is very much guitar based and it's rough and it's deserty, American deserty. And this is how I went about my way with uh, Fallout New Vegas. One person in particular asked me some questions on Reddit regarding snow globes and what Fallout is doing for Good Springs. Well, turns out this person is a UNLV professor and I just had to talk to him about Fallout New Vegas. This is Professor David Schwartz of UNLV. So, uh, have you given my documentary a watch? Great idea, and I really look forward to watching the whole thing pretty soon. Cool. Yeah, what do you have in your office? So here, for Fallout, I've got the New Vegas sign. All right. And then, I think a great motto. The truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Yep. Next stop on the tour, Nipton. Yeah, nipped in late at night. Huh, that mining facility on Bailey Road. Tells you where I hide Big MT. And hey, it's where the NCR Rangers would be in this area. Wow, hey, first for me, made it to Nipton. It's actually a pretty small town. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty much this sign, that trading post, that building over there that says California, some trailers, what looks like a, maybe a horse stable. I found out it was sold in uh, earlier this year. So uh, save those bottle caps. Anyway, I'm gonna place this special custom Nipton snow globe. Yeah. yeah, Nipton is different in the Fallout game, New Vegas, than, than in real life. Uh, yeah, you expect there to be some sort of big place where people get crucified, but oh well. Anyway, let's hide this snow globe. Uh, I hear something in the distance. I won! I won! I won! I won! I won! I won! Yeah, who won the lottery? I did. Oh, who, oh, oh. who? Oh. What'd you win? I won the lottery! I won the lottery! I won the lottery! Uh, okay, uh, what's the prize? Why, it's a subscription to Game Informer! Oh, hey, uh, can I see that? Uh, th thanks. Hmm. Ah, 300 greatest video games of all time. Not bad for Fallout. Pretty good. Where'd he go? Anyway, let's make some real magic happen with this snow globe here. Okay, just right here. How's that for a magic trick? And of course, can't forget the sunset sarsaparillas. Uh, the Whistle Stop Cafe and Saloon. Think I'll ever have a fallout party here? And how about Nipton? Uh, when I did my snow globe trip, yeah. I didn't go through Nipton, but instead my mother went through there, you know. Oh. You know, if anyone's actually trying to buy it? I don't know what you would do with it when you bought it, but you could buy it. Oh, hey there. I'm from post-production. Uh, turns out there's been a development with Nipton. It was bought by a company called Spiegel World. Spiegel World owns the show Absinthe. Absinthe plays at Caesar's Palace. Their plan for Nipton is to turn it into a circus town. So wait, people who work with Caesars are taking over Nipton? If something about that town, it'd be like the show Shit's Creek. It would be, but probably more disturbing. I don't know, like the couple times I've driven through there, I haven't really gotten good vibes. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know when you go in, the in there in the game, you see all these people crucified by the Legion, except this one guy who, you know, yeah. won the lottery. Yeah, I mean, that might be influencing me. I just kind of feel that sense of doom. 
around Nipton. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> even when you go to Nipton, there is a bit of doom. I feel it. It's probably not there objectively. I'm sure there are awesome people who live there. Okay. It's just after having been there in the game, you know, in real life, it's a little bit, you know, I'm like, hmm, I'm not really sure what to expect. Okay. Don't want to go to the town hall, that's for sure. All right. Stars of the Midnight Ranger. say uh, Fallout New Vegas you know, resembles Las Vegas for the most part. Of course, there are changes, but would you say there's a lot of similarities? I think there's a lot of continuities, and that's okay. the one thing that I'm really... One of the things I really like about the game is the care that the designers put into looking yeah. at the actual history and finding those continuities. Like, uh, they put uh, the Bonnie and Clyde car, but it says Vicky and Vance because, you know, copyright. Yeah. Buffalo Bills. Still closed. I hear it's going to reopen soon. Ooh, Bison Steve or Buffalo Bills. Hi there, I'm from much later in the future. Yeah, so Buffalo Bills reopened and uh, it's actually really like a theme park in here. Roller coaster still isn't working. I remember there being a log right here. Looks like uh, the logs are sitting still. Eh, no water, so. So yeah, this is the real Bonnie and Clyde car, and with matching uh, slot machines. Yeah, they moved it from uh, across the way. Wow, what happened here? Why, howdy, Prim Slim here. Happy trails, partner. Y'all come back now, yeah? Oh wait, I'm driving. Uh, coming up on Gene and the exit to Good Springs. I'll uh, save Good Springs for later. It's about 11 p.m. and coming up on Sloan. Sir, I keep telling you, the residents of Good Springs keep saying to go south towards Prim, then east past Nipton, and then when we get the searchlight, we head north from there. That's for schoolgirls. Now here's a route with some chest hair on it. Hold up. There are death claws all over the damn place north of here. If you just go to Sloan after leaving Good Springs at first, you will get killed by death claws. You go through Sloan and hey, there's still always, you know, construction and mining equipment there. Yeah. And definitely reminds you of the Sloan place. It does. But yeah. without the death claws. Yeah. <laughs> For now at least, you never know. So, come back to Sloan when he get a mini nuke. The South Point. That is my uh, go-to place for the Sierra Madre, where I left that snow globe. Las Vegas at night. Hail Kaiser. I'm too tired to go to the stratosphere, or Lucky 38. Calling it. I was really proud of the first Lost New documentary. Is it a masterpiece? Does it matter? I was really proud to have done it, and it was just ambitious just for someone like me. Uh, the only real critics who reviewed it uh, were on Film Threat, who review anything. They gave it a four and a half, and I actually enjoyed reading that review. Got a film? Send it to Film Threat. Uh, now here's Chris Gore. Uh, Filmthreat.com. That's the place to go for indie film. Send me your movie. I'll take a look. So I didn't just put it on YouTube and expect people to watch it and post links all around, you know, the web. I went out and went to encourage people to actually watch it. Uh, you know how in video games you just go around collecting things, you know, pick stuff up? You know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're essential to completing the game, other times... It just gives you an incentive to explore the game more. These places in Fallout New Vegas are based on real life places. I've lived in Las Vegas for nearly 20 years, so I know all these, I can go to all these places. I know the posts I made about it, uh, they were pretty popular on the Fallout subreddit and eh, got people talking. Yeah. And I figured, what if I did it all again, recorded everything and just turned it into a documentary? It's like this movie where you see the real Las Vegas while the game is being played. 
You know, the fallout in New Vegas does draw more from history than anyone realizes. To me, snow gloves are probably some of the best collectibles in video games, because they're based on real places, and it, and it represents the game and features its, uh, you know, mascot, Vault Boy. I also do I do a thing where I hide uh, bobbleheads in different cities. So, like, uh, let's, like, like that's done in Fallout 3, uh, 76, and Fallout 4. But, instead, but it'll be a while before I go to the East Coast, so I'm going to the nearest cities I could. Maybe I am part of the Fallout lore, and I'm the reason why these snow globes are there to begin with. And maybe in, 20, in 2081, someone's gonna go hide, go find the snow globes again. Matthew Galt from Vice asked me this. Do you think you'll make this trip to place the snow globes again? You know what? I think there's more material I can do with this subject I'm doing. New Vegas, snow globes, the Fallout uh, fandom. I think, the, yeah, I'm planning a sequel. I'm going to do the trip again next year. You did a pretty good job there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hey there, come see a movie. You have a movie playing? Okay. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's the spirit brand. It is. Okay. It didn't even distress it. Because I'm pre-war fallout, so it's okay if it's done. Different cities over time. And the, and this one that... Well, it's, it's an honor to be a part of this. What you were talking about? Uh, not really. Just an... Okay, uh, well, thanks for all... Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Uh... I know, it was a, make, making my movie what you will, but I made a movie, go make your own. Hello everyone, welcome to screening of Lost New, a Fallout Snow Globe Road Trip, AKA, hey look, I made a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So uh, what equipment did you use to record and what software did you use to edit it? Pretty much iPhones. For you filmmakers, I know you want to make your dream film, but try making a smaller film with what little money you have, with as little production value as you can, then work your way up. Then make that dream film when you have more resources. Anyone ever see the movie Fa Nomad Land? This movie's better. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, for whatever reason, I'm playing Fallout New Vegas on a black and white TV. It just looks good. You agree? I'm going to give it away. So someone actually did went looking for the snow globes. They asked the Oasis hotel owner about yeah, it. Uh, based on the game yeah. And I was told Vegas, the owner threw it away. Tell me your stats, where you are, your inventory. Yeah, I leave a note. Oh, I got to get going. But she said, but the owner said they threw it away. Hmm. <laughs> Trivia, what does Novak mean? No vacancy. Good. Yes, your documentary was fantastic. And I really, I watched the whole thing, riveted, and I thought, oh, I just watched a couple minutes and then I couldn't look away. Now, I don't mean in horror, I mean in, in uh, pleasure. So it was really, really good. Watch Max's documentary. It's funny, it's enlightening, and it'll take you places you've probably never been, but you want to go back. An honorable mention to the Marvels of Media Experimental Film Award to Maxwell James Scheller for Less New, a Fallout Snow Globe Road Trip. Maxwell couldn't be here tonight, but he did send a video message. <laughs> Hello, Marvels of Media. I am Maxwell James Scheller, creator of Less New and Fallout Snow Globe Road Trip, a documentary based on my experience of exploring the uh, area of Las Vegas, which inspired the game Fallout New Vegas. I was given honorable mention by Bob's of Media. It is quite an honor to be featured. Well, I did the snow globe trip once, just for an achievement to share. Then I figured I should record this if I ever do it again. Then I did. Well, I look forward to doing it again and the next movie. Uh, thank you for your support. While I cannot be in New York for your show, it does mean a lot to me to be uh, given recognition for, for Marvels of Media. Uh, thank you, and I hope to sh share with you my next project. And to all everyone else who's been featured, glad you did what you did. Don't stop. <laughs> hey, you wait around, class. You, uh, you try not to buy it. You try and, try and pass the time. So I take photos with the Game Boy camera.
Yeah, it's a cloudy, breezy day here in Las Vegas. All right, gonna stop at a far point then work my way across the city. Next up, the retreat at Mount Charleston, AKA Jacobstown. Next stop on the uh, Fallout Snow Globe Tour number three, the resort on Mount Charleston, Jacobstown. I'm gonna leave the Mount Charleston Snow Globe. I'll put it on their front desk and get it right this time. Ah, it's snowing. Nuclear winter has finally happened. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to Jacobstown. Thank you. Huh. Antique uh, gangs, just like uh, upstairs in, in the lodge in Jacobstown. All right, here's the front desk. Here's the Jacobstown's or Mount Charleston snow globe. How about I leave it there? Get it right. Come and take it. So I know, do you get any Fallout fans here? Uh, yeah, we actually had a, we had a guy bring up a bunch of snow globes uh, a couple years ago in 2020. That was me, and there's the other one, and, I, and it's one right there. Oh, well, if you want that uh, snow globe, go ahead and take it. I think I might. I was gonna nab the other one before somebody grabbed it, but uh, somebody took off. You know, Good Springs uh, has Fallout parties every year now. Uh, we intend to have that. You know what? You... Um, we are setting up in-house events, so I think uh, there definitely is enough interest out here to run one. Um, but we are just getting started with uh, running our own uh, property run events. So I think a fallout event in the future would be really awesome. Okay, well. Like the anniversary that the bombs drop or something like that. You know what? Consider it. Uh, thanks for your help. Uh, any super mutants come by? None that I've seen. <laughs> Could be uh, swallowing some stealth boys, though. Oh, adventure tokens. It's only right. You left us some stuff. I mean... Yeah. Here, we got a guy local up here on the mountain. He uh, burns these, hand makes them. Got this one right here. It's got the bark all the way around it. Wow, a reward. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you, man. And it goes on the fridge. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Looking good so far. It's the love man at grandpa, the love man at grandpa. Come on, take the bottle cap. Take the bottle cap. Either uh, get your stats or test your luck. I think Grandpa Simpson is in this. It's the love, mad at Grandpa. It's the love, mad at Grandpa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, where to next? There's a couple of things I wish they put in there. So there's a crashed plane up on Mount Charleston. Oh that I thought would be cool. Oh, yeah, I mean, we had the bomber in the lake story, yeah. but now there's a, a crash plane on Mount Charleston. Is, is it still there? It is. Like, if wow. you ever hike to the top of Mount Charleston, I think it's like 13,000 feet. It's wow. a pretty intense hike. It's like, yeah, I've done it maybe twice, and I don't think I'm going to be doing it yeah. again because it's really intense. But, yeah, you go past it. I mean, and basically, they, could ne they haven't been able to remove it because it's, like, all the way up in the mountain. So, I mean, there's little things like that that I thought would have been cool. Wow, that would have been in a cool quest. So, yeah. like, you go to Jacobstown and, the, you know. Exactly. You know, we need some power. Uh, yeah. We need power. Go to, we, and there's this plane up there, so just yeah. hike up there. So, I mean, that would be a cool mod okay. thing if somebody wanted to do a little uh, side quest mod. So, you know, you're using music from the 50s and 60s, and then the game, well, the bombs start dropping off in uh, 2077. Uh, how come we're hearing all classic music, but we're not hearing any Norwegian death metal? Did no one come up with that in this universe? Well, again, you got to remember that um, the whole notion about um, Fallout games are that the world as we know it ended uh, somewhere in the mid-50s, and oh. we're very, very consistent. Uh, basically, all the world as we know it ended at about 56. 
So the music that was created then, this is what we are taking as a point of departure. Everything that created since. So if you are in 2077 now, what you will hear is music that is being derived from what people really developed out of the 50s music. And that's the way it is. Some things just stopped in 1956 and just persisted. In a parallel reality. Well, it definitely creates a lot of uh, questions and theories. So uh, thanks to the insight on that. Uh, so, Ringmaster, this is your Fallout collection. Uh, Fallout and all of my Wasteland souvenirs and the like. Oh, all right. Huh. Well, we've got two of your snow globes in there. Oh, I see. Why does Fallout New Vegas has such a lasting appeal? Oh, there are many answers, and this documentary should cover them. But I think one reason that goes overlooked is the modding community. Yep, people who saw this great game saw it had some problems. So they stepped in to fix it themselves and come up with all these mods. The modding community for, for the Fallout games in general is just so far and wide. They, they've come up with mods that make the Fallout games take place in New Orleans and London. How about I install some mods myself? Let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, this one looks good. You know, if you turn a corner in Las Vegas, you might be surprised with what you find. Even graffiti like this is worth a look. Well, when I said there were opportunities to do something different, uh, this is one of them. Usually I hide this, the strip snow globe at the uh, Oasis Motel, not far from the stratosphere. But I recently learned that a lot of neon signs, uh, even from motels that were closed down, are popping up as part of Project Enchilada, which is to, well, reinvigorate all the neon history here. So... Maybe we'll all see more neon signs. But for now, I think uh, in honor of Project Enchilada, I'm going to leave the uh, the strip here at the Blue Angel Motel uh, fixtures. Okay, where to put it? Where to put it? Where to put it? The strip. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's make this simple. Right here. And some bottle caps. Oh, Blue Angel, can you do for me what you did for Pinocchio? Do little hi. things. Uh, hi, you got a question? Just wondering what you do with Fallout. What you uh, doing out here, man? Oh, uh, I do this thing where I uh, <laughs> uh, take, put these snow globes in places and I uh, uh, make a documentary about it. I have one called okay. Lost New, Fallout okay. Snow Globe Road Trip. Cool. I just saw you just was like, hey, I know Fallout. See what you up to, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot, good sir. Uh, 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 uh. Have a good one. You too. Hmm. I left the strip snow globe. Well, definitely far from the strip. Does that make it not as authentic to the game? Eh, probably. You know what? These things happen. Do understand? I really like what Project Enchilada is doing. There's going to be a lot of neat signs to look for. You know, for tourists. Blue Angel is one of them. So the Fallout games... Use real existing classic pop and rock music to give that neo fifties theme. Uh, what are your favorites uh, that that uh, you like to hear on the Fallout radio? <laughs> you know, I'm like a really real sucker for the oldies, and but for 
Vegas specifically listened a lot to all music that has to do with guitar, you know, any like Johnny Cash style or any other music that featured guitars. This is what really did it for me in Vegas. Ah, so good. So New Vegas is definitely more of the guitar game. Yep. Hmm. Going to the top of the world. I should dress nice and not look suspicious. <clears throat> Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. And I'm making my way into the strut, or lucky 38. Uh... Halt, present your COVID vaccine card. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, uh, Mr. House wants the platinum chip. He'll get the platinum chip. Might be a coincidence, but the dealers are wearing fallout colors. Hey, you preparing for the apocalypse? You got bottle caps on you? Uh, yes, I am. Jeez. Got a fine collection. Thank you. You're Thank you, sir. Thanks for keeping us safe. Are you ready for some thrills? I better get a thrill for $29. We're in Arkansas. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're from Little Rock. Okay, cool. Hey, Mr. House. I got your platinum chip. <laughs> All right, so no Fallout fans, uh, from, you can tell. Okay, thank you. I'm pretty sure fans of Fallout come here. Uh, it's just not something the workers here notice. Where's Mr. House so I can get 250 caps for this? And 2,000 caps for this? A, a snow globe is 2,000 caps. And, uh, and this platinum chip that decides the future of New Vegas. 250 caps. Okay, let's hide the, the test site. Well, best I could do is uh, right here where the bar is, just like in the game. And get the platinum chip while you're at it. Sunset sarsaparillas, why not? Wanna go for a ride? Woo! 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 Oh, this actually works. Uh, you can make out the, the West Gate with this. Ah, well, at least uh, there's a big screen up here. I am Robert Edwin House. President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the New Vegas Strip. Robert House. Hello. Do you have my snow globe and the platinum chip? Uh, yes, it's at the bar. Uh, people find it and tag me. Bring them to me, and I'll reward you. Uh, okay, uh, what do I get if I bring it to you? A total of 2,250 bottle caps. Dude, bottle caps are worthless. I'm leaving. Did you know in Fallout New Vegas, the snow globes that represent different locations are a reference to Citizen Kane. Much like in Citizen Kane, these represent a perfectly controlled world that Mr. House desires. I love it. I enjoy them. There's something Diorama set inside a glass dome that I find pleasing. 
Okay, okay. Uh, who is uh, who is Mr. House based on? Yeah, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Yep. Well, I think he's got a bit of a Nikola Tesla in him as well. Okay. Or and maybe some Walt Disney. Okay. So yeah. well, congratulations to Comic Con founder Mike Towery for winning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, go to Mr. House, Ooh, uh, yeah. a central character. Uh, so he's based on Howard Hughes, but I think there's a bit of. Uh, you know, maybe Nikola Tesla and maybe some other people, uh, inventors and science types that are part of his character. Could be. I mean, the thing that got me about House that was so accurate was that when Howard Hughes moved to Vegas, he basically holed himself up on the ninth floor of the Desert Inn. Yes. And never came out. And he communicated. So this guy named Robert Mayhew, a former FBI and CIA agent, was basically running his Nevada operations for him. And he never, they never met face to face, not even once, because he said, I don't want you to think of me the way I am now. I want you to think of me the way I was, you know, back, you know, when I was in my prime. So I just love that when you go to meet Mr. House, it's his face in the screen when he was younger. I mean, that just, they absolutely nailed it, like absolutely nailed it. Okay. And just the whole way he communicates you know, you well, like, you do meet him in person if you choose a certain quest line, but like he doesn't want you to meet him in person. Continuity uh, in Fallout 4, you go to the Cambridge Institute of Technology, and mm -hmm. his and Mr. House's bio reads that's where he studied. Yeah. So uh, looks like there may be a connection with the institute. Yeah. So, get any fans of Fallout? Mm -hmm. yeah, New Vegas? Mm, no. No. Okay. <laughs> no one really comes up here in a vault suit. That's true. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're funny. Except, I, except me sometimes. Oh, really? Uh, two years ago, but I'm just looking less inconspicuous. Okay, yeah. all right. You know, security. Welcome, I'm glad you came. Yeah, Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, had yeah? fun. Yeah? That's good. Where are, you, where are you off to next? Are you going to be here a few days? or? Oh, yeah, a few days. Uh, doing a Fallout tour. Okay, nice. Nice. Fallout? Yeah, yeah, New Vegas. Um, Fallout New Vegas. Yes, I had a guy, he uh, he came dressed as the, the kid, and my husband loves the game. The kid? Yes! Um, he even gave me a card. He, he does a, a show. Oh yeah, I've heard of him. Met him at Good Springs. Yes! <laughs> hey, look, if you go upstairs right now, there is a there is a snow globe you can take next to the bar. And, ch and chip, and, uh, and bottle caps. Anyway, thanks a lot. Places to visit if you're a Fallout fan. The Intel Museum in Silicon Valley. Hmm. Leave a uh, platinum chip there. Sunnyvale is where the platinum chip in New Vegas is made, so I left one there. Yeah, some guy on Reddit found it. He was grateful. He didn't call me out on littering. So then Las Vegas has its atomic history. It definitely creates a demand for underground vaults. Yeah, I mean, one interesting fact that's a real fact is that 45% of all the nuclear weapons ever detonated in the history of the world were detonated at the Nevada test site. Uh, yeah. So, like, literally, they bombed <laughs> this part of the desert a lot. Does the radiation still, you know, exist well, there, or does it, does it have a half-life, so it dissipates, so we can, you know, grow crops there? Well, I mean, that's the whole thing with the downwinders. Yes, yeah, so that was the people who lived downwind, the cattle and stuff, and there's... Yeah, I think I've read stories of, you know, these bom these bombs go off, then there's that downwind, and the and it goes to where people are, you know, living. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, so and that's when And that's when we get the hills have eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, at the time they played that, well, you know, there's no health hazards at all. This is totally safe. You know, we're the government. We wouldn't lie. Of course, this is totally safe. And the really interesting thing about it is originally, so the first test was scheduled in January of 51. And originally, the people in Las Vegas were against it 100%, saying, oh, my God, this is terrible. They noticed that before the test, people came to Vegas to buy stuff. And, like, people would just go to the department stores and just buy a shirt. Like, why are you doing that? Well, I just want to say that I bought something here before the town was destroyed. And like, hmm. And they figured out that this was actually a big tourist attraction. So they then leaned into it and had atomic cocktails. And you could actually, they had watch parties where you would basically stay up all night drinking. And because the, the tests happened in the, around dawn and then like around 5, 5.30, you would go up to the roof of the hotel and then watch the bomb and then drink some more. 
I've uh, seen, seen some photos of, let's say, Miss Bombshell competitions. Yeah. yeah, that was a total thing. So they really embraced it. So a lot of the stuff, you know, I know people may think a lot of the stuff, like the Radiation King TVs and stuff like that, well, that's so far-fetched. But in the real 50s and 60s, they did embrace that in Vegas, well, at least until 62 with the atmospheric test ban. So after 62, they're all underground. There's about 100 yes. above ground shots between 51 and 62. Yeah, I actually went to the Atomic Testing Museum, mm. not far from here. Uh, yeah. and yes, they did have uh, a replica of you know going underground to the Atomic Testing Area. That kind of reminds me of the entrance to the vaults. Yes. Yeah, I think there are similarities. See, there's checkers. Oh, and a Fallout strategy guy with a snow globe. Unreal. Now, this is probably the area where you would find the Mormon Fort snow globe. Hey there, Ranger. You get a lot of Fallout fans here? We sure do. Uh, last year we had quite a few. Um, and in fact, we had the gentleman who invented the game come here and give a talk. So, a lot uh, of people do come in uh, costume here. I know there was Dr. David Schwartz. Uh, yeah. He spoke. I yeah. met him. All right. Thanks a lot. How, how many Fallout fans come through here? Um, on average, I'd say probably five to ten per year. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Right. And most of them, like I said, come in costume. Wow. That was me two years ago. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, the historic Mormon fort. Uh, not much has changed. I heard people have been invited to talk about Fallout here, and they do get fans. Anyway, best I can do is leave the Mormon fort snow globe. At the sign here. Where are the bandages? Oh well. Hello. My name is Elder Cram, and I have for you the most amazing Fallout prop. This is an amazing find. If you find this, it'll be like anything in your life. Anything in your life. Anything in your life. Fallout New Vegas Mormon Fort Snow Globe. Okay, it's about 4 p.m. They're going to close. So I'm thinking the next time I uh, do this, I go to the Mormon Fort and, you know, like do my own take on the yes. Book of Mormon. <laughs> Man, that's making us sick. Hello, <laughs> my name is Elder Graham. I would like to share with you the most amazing game. It has so many awesome parts. I can assure you that this game is not lame. I'll work on it. What, what in your mind sort of separates New Vegas from the rest of the Fallout games? I mean, this is Las Vegas and Fallout. Gambling, show business, neon lights, uh, tourism. I've lived in Vegas for like 20 years. And of course, the state of Nevada has a lot to do with atomic energy with all the atom bomb tests. Uh, would you say that went into, into the music and the world? New Vegas, unlike the other Fallout games, had almost this kind of uh, mobster, um, oh. you know, uh, feel to it. Oh, yes. It definitely, it definitely feels like uh, the mafia. The, exactly. Uh, and like so like gangs, old gangster movies. Exactly. So I was really right away um, thinking um, about movies uh, like The Untouchable, you know, The Godfather. So the whole crime element um, in Vegas was way stronger. Crime outlaws um, was stronger than in all the rest of the, the Fallout games, which more built on mutants and um, really more organized fighting and different armies um, and even continents. This was something very unique to Vegas and I definitely liked to uh, take advantage of it, writing the music through.
Fall Queens, make the Kings. All right, free side. Let's drop this snow globe off. You look like uh, 70. No, I am 70. Uh -huh. you, I, you look like 90s era. All right, all right. There I am, there I am. Hi. Oh, okay. Hey. Boy, what a pickle ball. Oh, yeah. Ever uh, play Fallout? Ever play a Fallout game? New Vegas? Oh, really? You want to hold on to that? What is it? It's a snow globe. You look like marijuana? Uh, no, it's. it's wait, a wait, wait, wait. Don't. Wait, wait. Anyway, ah. You'll be fat, bro. What? I'm not by. Okay, later. <laughs> Eh. Eh, how about that? Uh, whatever. Here. Huh, you can buy snow globes on Fremont Street. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, Dead Rising 4. If you do things right, you could have the kings. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, kings are, you know, Elvis. Yeah. Try, but they can't. But they didn't get the rights to that. Yeah, which I love the way they did that too, because you just imagine if somebody did find, you know, a school for Elvis impersonators 200 years from now, they would think that it was a god that they were trying to emulate. So it's, I, again, that's one of my favorite okay. things about the game. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, yeah, I think Elvis would be, is kind of worshipped like a yeah. god. <laughs> he is. He is. I mean, the people who believe that he didn't really die <laughs> and will come back. You know, I watched this documentary on Kung Fu and, you know, man, Bruce Lee died so early that well, we think this guy might be like a mythical figure. Yeah, I mean, definitely. A lot of yeah. people still look up to him. I can imagine if there, if there was like Fallout Memphis, people there'd be a tribe of Dolly Parton. There could fans. be. Yeah, for sure. You look like Elvis, but you can't say Elvis. Right. You, you, you don't even see the words Elvis anywhere. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah. who tore off all the Elvis names on the on the on your posters and Got my gun. Oh well. Hmm? Wait, this isn't Fallout New Vegas. Rainbow Six Vegas. Huh. Oh, that get in here. There's a radio on it. Uh, yeah, if you just press the uh, the button on the side here. Where? Right yeah. Okay. Yep, listen, listen. Oh my god. That shit's nice, dude. Oh yeah, thanks. Alright. Very beautiful. Alright, appreciate it. I gotta get Oh alright. Okay. That's no good for okay. Thank you. Alright, later. Things that never change. Traffic. Traffic never changes. Well, uh, next stop on the snow globe tour. Big MT. Why, big, why is Big MT going to the National Weather Service? Well, because in Old World Blues, yeah, the Big MT snow globe is found in the weather station in the facility. I used to do it. I used to hide the Big MTs at that mining place in Mountain Pass. Something about it remind me of Big MT. But I believe the National Weather Service is just as, maybe even more, a fitting place. 
Find it here, the National Weather Service. Yeah, look at that big MT snow globe at the National Weather Service. And right down here, next to some uh, Sunset Sarsaparillas I already threw down there. Okay, back to DLC. Uh, there's uh, the big MT place. Uh, yeah. That's based on a research facility north of here. Interesting. Yeah, it's what you mean. Yeah, you look it up on the Fallout Wiki. Okay. They're dogs and they're playing poker? Ah! Eh, Las Vegas Boulevard. The Las Vegas side. Where there's always a line for a photo. But will there be a line for a snow globe? Hoop, backwards. For a snow globe. A special custom New Vegas snow globe. Yeah, you see Brotherhood and the Deathclaw fighting. Ah, uh, yes, families come here. Anyway, where to put this? Where to put this? Uh, hmm. Oh, not by the sign. Of course, by the sign. How about behind the sign? Good place. Oh, me Deathclaw. Me run over the place. Yeah. Brotherhood of Steel. Exterminate the vermin. Hi, I'm Nick Valentine. How about I be in a sequel to New Vegas? Huh? Huh? My favorite thing is all the little places around the map, you know, just that you can go past. And it's kind of funny just living here. You know, for example, to get to work every day, I drive under the airport. And by the way, that would be another great mod doing that tunnel, the airport connector tunnel under the airport, something like that. I think that's more of a cyberpunk big city vibe, not so much, uh, you know, because it's night and the lights are on. You go through, you, know, you pass the light and the light and the light. And if that was in, you know, fallout, there, there, there'd be no lights. Yeah, yeah, there wouldn't be. They still have, like, planes, you know, strung around? Um, yeah, I mean, and I think displays. it's based on the, what's now the B-Gates, is what I think it's based on, which was the original configuration of McCarran, you know, so it's not really accurate to anything as it was around 2010, but I think they kind of took it back in the past a little bit. There's a little bit, you can kind of see it at some points, because I think it's the B gates where you go through the thing and then you go out and there's the circle and you have the gates off of that. It's not just a big rectangle, which kind of reminds me, I kind of get that vibe. Hail Caesar! Hail Kaiser! Panoramics, boomerangs, selfies, take some selfies. For 10 years. Back in the day when they created these signs, they only leased them. That is actually the year Las Vegas was founded, and that's their way of paying homage to that year by putting the date right on their sign. Mm. Now I know most people never heard of Betty Willis by name before, but I'm also very confident that every single person here has seen another piece of her work already. The world famous, welcome to fabulous Las Vegas sign at the south end of the strip. Making this the first hotel and casino downtown on Fremont Street with carpeting on the casino floor. Vegas vacation, you have already seen part of that sign. That sign used to be at the old Jessica Boneyard where they filmed cousin Vicky getting on top of that sign <laughs> in the movie. Well, she's not that old. She's from the 1980s because it's brand new. We just got it about five weeks ago. See, there's no neon gas in this one. They're using argon. After they created that character, they allowed anyone that wants to use them to use them, call them whatever you want. Howdy, partner. Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? They opened up in 1939, and then they put that sign up a year later in 1940. Started out as a drawing on a piece of paper by the owner's teenage daughter, because by 1969, 
the Red Barn is one of our first openly gay bars in Las Vegas. That there is just one of the skulls from Treasure Island. If we were to stand him up on end, he would literally collapse under his own weight. That's why there's no pylons down. It was the very first guitar ever installed at a horror cafe in 1990. They put that pylon sign up in 1966 when they opened. It exists primarily for the place. So I finally get to meet the curry. But even more important than that, now you all know that we use both argon and neon gas in all these works of art. Hello, good any fans of Fallout recently? Besides me. I don't know what that is. Fallout the game. Hey there, great tour. Thank you. And uh, yeah, they have a character who's uh, still specializing in neon signs, uh, 200 years in the future. <laughs> We had, um, when Fallout had that thing here, Oh yes. a bunch of characters here. Oh yeah, Did they, I, I heard they had a launch party. Talk about yes, that? Yes, that was at the bar, but a lot of characters showed up here, so we got to see a lot of um, people dressed. Oh, you mean the Good Springs? Yep. Yeah, that was the Good Springs party. Yeah. So yeah, people came around here. Yeah. Well, must have. They did. They did. Approved. Well, one particular quest in Fallout New Vegas that takes you all over the map is a quest from neon designer Michael Angelo. Do these places he sends you to exist in real life? The world's largest, uh, tallest thermometer looks... of solar panels when you drive towards searchlight are there any buildings with a neon sign that michelangelo will take inspiration from i've driven past these uh, solar stations here i don't see any neon on them well looks like michelangelo can't get his inspiration Got the names of Nuka Colas from around the world. Sour. Still have an aftertaste. Tastes like a pear. Uh, Max, uh, can you just not have a long segment where you drink a, a lot of soda? 
It's too long, you're just gonna bore people. Hmm? Hey, you're right. A segment like that would get pretty stale. Okay, I, I know how to just segue through that. Thanks. And hey, if you're ever at Coca-Cola World, try all that soda for yourself. Don't let some guy on YouTube describe it for you. So yeah, what's it like wearing all this in there? Well, yeah. Well, the manager's actually asked me what, how long I had it. Four years to this day in 2021. Yeah, you wear a costume, you get asked questions. I'm thirsty. Uh, water, water, beer, beer, some purple stuff. Ooh, Nuka Quantum. Well, next stop on the Fallout Tour, Zion Methodist Church here in Las Vegas. I could go to Zion National Park, which is about, oh, maybe two or three hours away. Let's see, how much is gas? You know what? I've been there twice already. So I'll just uh, take the easy way here and leave Zion National Park snow globe at Zion Methodist Church. <laughs> There we go. Okay, and here's the snow globe. Ah, such a good snow globe. All right. There we go. And sunset sarsaparillas. Hmm. Repairing lives for eternity. Good words. Okay, let's see who gets it. Well, anyway, in the Honest Hearts DLC, there is one character who just stands out and, and gives a great performance, and that is Joshua Graham. In Honest Hearts, he is the heart. Uh, for more on Joshua Graham, is the man who does his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Fallout fans, Keith Zarabajka. Zarabajka. Did I get his name right? Zarabajka, okay, thanks. You voice Joshua Graham in the Fallout New Vegas is Honest Hearts downloadable content, so that means uh, people pay like $5 extra to play uh, more of the game, or go to a new part of the game. Right. And you play a character who I find, uh, he's very memorable. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's like, it wasn't a very big job for me. I mean, I worked, you know, several days on it, you know, as a voice actor, oh my God, 11, 12 years ago now, you know, and I don't believe that I've done anything on it since, you know, that was new. I've done other stuff, you know, for the uh, Fallout sort of crew, but um, that was a kind of bit for, for Joshua Graham, but evidently it had a lot of residents. I know people have, uh, they, they, they actually write to me a lot about it. So, um, you yes, know, I'm yeah. pleased, but uh, as I said, I, I didn't have that, that much to do with it other than recording the voices, you know. Well, you give that character, well, you, you make him speak. You That's what they pay me for. I know, you can call another job, but you certainly gave a, a character who's very worth respect. Okay, so right. Joshua Graham, he comes off as dignified, faithful, uh, religious to the Mormon faith. He wants peace, but he, he kills because he feels he has to, to bring peace. He, he's a real total badass. I mean... He was Caesar's uh, uh, legate or leader. You know, he led the Hoover Dam raid, but, uh, well, he failed, and, well, he got thrown into the river while being burned. And he miraculously shows up in Zion National Park four years later, which is like hundreds of miles no northeast in Utah. That's amazing. Well, that's what they wrote. And he does have some of the best quotes, like, uh, like uh, he says, God can't do all the work. 
<laughs> that makes it that makes us think, okay, well, God's watching, but if we want to get anything done, we gotta do it ourselves. We have to do it ourselves, you know. Okay. I know when uh when, when people ask if he falls, he says every day, some days are harder than others. So how do you create a character who feels like he's always in pain, yet he remains so focused? You can only do so much, honestly. I mean, the, the, the artists do a lot of it, you know, and, but in terms of the voice, you have to be, you have to be able to be understood, but at the same, so that's like, you can't go, that's why I tell my acting classes, the first thing you have to do is be seen and be heard. You know, most people who aren't actors have no idea what actors do. And in this, and in these cases, you know, usually what you do is you, um, when you're presented with a script, you break it down. The Russian acting teacher said, beats, B-I-T-S. You break it down into little sort of more digestible pieces, you know, so you don't try to do it all at once. But what happens in um, when you're working on a, on a game like this, mm -hmm. uh, like Fallout New Vegas for this character, you're presented with a series of lines that you then are told, well, he's in pain here. He's angry here. He's whatever. And you just do three, usually an ABC take you know, one, one, two, three of each, and uh, you give them different choices on it. And uh, you try to find what, and then they actually put the arcs together for you. So it's like you often, you don't work with another person except for the director and the engineer, you know, and sometimes there's a writer on the line. Often when you're recording these things, in fact, almost, I don't think I've ever worked on a video game uh, unless it was in, um, unless we were doing a uh, performance uh, capture, you know, in which you're like dotted in suits and then you're in a volume, uh, which I did for like Halo 4 and uh, L.A. Noir uh, and Dead Space. Um, okay, so you don't work I'm, with I'm familiar with the work of Andy Serkis and my mother is also a mime. So <laughs> she teaches that kind of movement. It's still acting, you know, uh, yes. whatever, however you may say it. Like for this, I did not do it for, for Joshua Graham. All I did were the lines. So you never work with another actor unless you do you're doing performance capture then you will often usually work with other actors and that's how you do it and they say all right i want this line to where your voice crackles and you go it never stops burning you know some, some, or it never stops burning or it never stops burning and you give them three choices you know and then they take them and then they they kind of build the character uh from the lines that you do so that's what you do and, and most of these games, that's what, that's what you do. Okay, so did they, were you shown any character art of, of Joshua Graham? Do you know what he was going to look like before you voiced him? Uh, yeah, they showed me a picture, you know, of what it was like. So the Honest Hearts DLC, it takes place in Zion National Park. And did you get familiar with that area? And as well as the Mormon faith, which is a part of Joshua's character? It's in the lines. Okay. You know, they don't really give you much of a backstory. They'll give you a little bit, you know, some of it. And then basically it comes out while you're reading it, you know, uh, as you're talking about. A Mormon and, a, he, uh, and, he's, and, he, and he's a failed general who, well, got burned and thrown into the river <clears throat> as punishment. Right. They'll, they'll tell you things like that or that this is where you get burned and thrown into the river as punishment. Can you give us several screams of being burned, you know, or some of you know, being thrown into the river? Like you'll do a bunch of things at the end, usually of a session uh, in which you do what they call efforts in which you're being burned and you're falling from different heights or you're being burned at different intensities. So you do a smaller, medium and a, and, a, and a larger burn. And I have been several times, I've been designed National Park. I, I was on a tour from the theater company, I, the organic that I was in in, uh, in Chicago. We toured from uh, Portland, Oregon through uh, Moscow, Idaho and uh, Sun Valley, would that be it? Yeah, Sun Valley. And uh, then we played Ogden, Utah, and Salt Lake City, and Provo, and St. George, Utah, and uh, Richfield, Utah, which was a trip, you know, because people came from 100 miles to see this show. It was Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I was Huckleberry Finn. It was a beautiful production. And I remember someone gave, gave me a, a, an inscribed Book of Mormon and when I was playing uh, the character in Richfield, Utah, after a performance, it was very touching. So Honest Hearts, yeah, it takes place in, you know, Zion. Actually, on the first time I did this, I actually dressed up as, you know, the Joshua Graham character and just walked around. But, you know, uh, wearing a heavy vest, wearing bandages. What is this? Uh, you, you get asked about that, especially by security. So, uh, I know you want to cosplay in real life, but uh, you might look crazy doing it. But thankfully, Vault Boy suit, uh, you're not going to look that crazy. 
Yes. Well, I w- w- been went to Zion National Park twice because I do this ritual where I leave snow globes that are found in the game, you know, <laughs> in their real life locations. And well, that's wow. Uh, yeah, what brought me to Zion National a Park. Dedication. So I did that, you know, that road trip was inspired by Fallout New Vegas. I, I have never done that. Um, I, I used snow globes in a, a, a short film that I produced uh, that my oldest boy, Jack Sarabica, directed called The Second Coming about aliens who've been sent to end the human race. Uh, but the pilot has fallen in love with the, with human com- comedy and um, it, it kind of degenerates from there. It's- so how did you come to do voices for Obsidian and Bethesda, you know, in Fallout games? I got submitted by my agents and they ended up hiring me, you know, huh. uh, but I've prior to, I'd done a lot of video games. I've done video games since oh, the mid nineties. I think the first time I did a video game, I was um, played Boris Yeltsin in something called uh, attack America, you know, and it was kind of fun. Um, but I've done, uh, I've done well over a hundred games, I think. Um, different kinds of characters. One of the first ones that I did was called Escape from Monkey Island, and I played some gay Hispanic florist named Bowsley. It was very funny. That's all I can say. Okay, so you say you've done over 100 roles. Uh, I would say, yeah, that's pretty... And, and which one do you, would you feel is your most remembered or most memorable? Well, the one that people seem to remember the most is Joshua Graham, which always Great. surprised me. You know, uh, I have to say, but the one that 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 has stuck out strongest in my mind in terms of games that I've done was the Erdidact in uh, in Halo Four. We are forerunners, guardians of all that exists. Very long. I have a number of very long speeches in there. That was a fun one to shoot. We did that as performance capture, and that was like many many sessions actually, both as performance capture and. And just vo- voice recording because they changed a lot of the script as we went along, but it was cool, you know. And I, I would be dressed in the little Andy Circus sort of outfit, you know, with dots all over my every every muscle line in my face, uh, and a little helmet and that had a, a camera out here, and uh, I would look like a complete dweeb in it. And then I would step into the volume and look at the at the Im- image on the monitor, and I was this twenty foot tall alien, and it was pretty cool. You're an actor, and later you're. You're like this, you know, space god. I think people really look up to Joshua. Is he like a gold, good role model to look up to? Uh, so he comes off as a hardworking, faithful person. He's a hardworking, faithful person, but he is a mass killer. So I'm yes, not sure. I, I if, know. I don't. We don't want to condone killing, but he seems to only want to do it to bring peace. Seems to, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, killing is killing, you know. Yeah. He's leading a tribe uh, who's at war with another tribe, and they might may face. Oh, he's at war against Caesar, isn't he? I, yes. He says he's things like, "I want to have my revenge against him, against yes. Caesar. I want to call it my own." Yes, and he's white leg God's anger to justify the things I've done. He's declaring war against the white legs tribe, where well, seem to want to be in Caesar's legion, and either you know listen to Daniel and leave the Zion or stay in Zion, but they have to kill the white legs. That's the one he wants, choice he wants, because he feels that's how he gets peace. Yeah, well, as he says, I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore like any other. I guess he feels he's at war and war never changes. Yeah, although he does say the thing, lastly, waging war against good people is bad for the soul. This may not seem important to you now, but it's the most important thing I've said. Yeah, well, he's certainly at at war with some bad people. I mean, apparently they burned his uh, previous town of New Canaan. Well, when the walls come tumbling down, when you lose everything you have, you always have family. Well, I guess it's not an easy choice, but this just happens in times of war. You don't like to do it, but you got to do it. It's true. War is hell. More movie making is heck. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Any Thank final you, words? No, other than keep the peace. And I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But remember, we can't expect God to do all the work. Wow, that was a good interview. Good hearing from him. Okay, who else can I talk to about being in Fallout? Uh, oh, this guy's on my friends list. I'm being joined by one of the voice actors from Fallout 4, Joe Walkman. Joe, how are you doing? 
I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, man? Yeah, uh, yeah. So in, in Fallout 4, you voice characters who are living in vaults, living isolated from the rest of the world, which is, well, in chaos and irradiated. Which is what I've been doing for the last three years. There's a character with the uh, children of Adam who, well, they embrace the world around them and call radiation and Adam their god. Let's talk about getting in the character. Uh, you voice the security card guards in Vault 81. And yes. these, are these are guys who, well, pretty much stand around, keep the peace, but Pretty much everyone in Vault 81, which is more of the controlled vaults, uh, it's probably more of a boring job since everyone... Yeah, uh, too much of nothing. Yeah, but these are people isolated from the rest of the world and wearing the same clothing. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you research that, getting that uh, perspective? You know, some things you don't necessarily have to research real carefully. And, and I'm the type of person, I, I've always frankly been a fan of post-apocalyptic novels and, and, and movies and things like that. So, so all this stuff is, lots of times an actor it, it gets nat uses natural rhythms from stuff he knows to do stuff. And this was one of those cases where sometimes where the guy was firm, there are sometimes where he was bored. And that's fairly easy to do no matter what you're wearing. But since I'm a big post-apocalyptic fan, it was kind of easy to slip into that stuff. And Dishonored too, I got to play guards that ran around and had to fight off big bugs and stuff. So I got to I got to get that kind of action in another game. You know about playing guards. It would appear that I've played a lot of guards. The sole survivor goes to the glowing sea or ground zero that turned Boston into an irradiated mess. Uh, and you voice a character who's in love with radiation and praises Adam. A child of the Adam. Called Griffith. But I do, you know, every apocalyptic society has some population that worships the cause of the apocalypse so it's, it happens all the time usually apocalyptic movies or scripts or games or whatever have a religious element in them morton joe and the war boys worship v8 that you know, the, you know, the, the good versus evil the apocalypse has arrived you know the biblical apocalypse the, so there's always a religious element to pretty much any apocalyptic tale so there's no surprise there when radiation takes over and radiation is everywhere, we see God is everywhere. Therefore, radiation is our God. I guess so. That makes sense. And well, you know, I, I figure it this way. The early man probably watched lightning hit a tree and burst it on fire and they went and they made a God out of that. Hmm. So it's not surprising. It's, it's, it's an inst it, I think it's an instinctual thing in people to do that. They see something more powerful than them and they, and, and they, they give it a name and they worship it hoping that they'll get some of that power or, or be the... You know, if you look real closely, look real closely, real closely, look at your hand real closely, you can see Adam and Adam and Adam and Adam and Adam. That's true. And now we have, now we can split the Adam and feel, you know, the energy of Adam. Exactly. Especially from Uranium-238. Yes, indeed. Let's not do that, okay? Liam Neeson does the father in uh, Fallout 3. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I uh, think you can play the loving dad, father, scientist. I have played the loving dad, father, scientist many a time, but I didn't do it with Liam Neeson's voice. That's Let's it. just keep talking about this apocalyptic stuff. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Joe. Okay, going to this convention. Uh, anyone from Fallout making an appearance? Uh, you were in Fallout 4, not New Vegas, but you're still in the Fallout family. Yes. Uh, what is it like to voice a Fallout game? What is the experience like? Oh, it's re it's really cool because you're um, you you get this character, you get immersed in this character, and then the world you get to find about the world. But the most exciting thing about voicing a Fallout character is when the game comes out, finding your character in the game. That to me, that's the icing on the cake. That's the cherry on top. As I play, and it takes me a while to find my to find my character because I'm not very good. But that's my favorite part about um, voicing a character is like actually being in the game and finding my character in the game. Back to underground vaults. Are there yeah. like any plans, or let's say if we need to move people underground, or are there any companies who have that sort of business in Las Vegas or anywhere? I think we're screwed because there's the there's caliche, which is a, a mineral layer that makes it really hard to dig underground. So not only do we, I mean, there is one famous vault. Uh, caliche. Yeah. What, what's that? It's like just a rock kind of compound, it, but it makes it really, if you, if any, if you like having to like dig a hole in your backyard for a post or something, it is rough. You need a pick to get through it. 
Wow. You know, and just in general, the dirt, the dirt here is pretty un inhospitable. There is a real vault that's somewhere, I think, down in Henderson or Boulder City. There's a real vault that they built, but I don't think we would see a lot more of them. And we're pretty much screwed in the event of an actual nuclear attack, because you've got to figure Nellis Air Force, or Air Force Base is going to get it, and then Hoover Dam is going to get it. So we're kind of, and then there's basically three main routes out of town, two of which are going to be irradiated for sure. So, you know, you'd want to get out of Vegas long before the bombs fell. Oh, that water keeps getting lower and lower. Oh, snow globe. Oh, I went too far in Arizona. Better turn around. Uh, good thing I left a Nuka Zapper at home. Hope they don't mention uh, Joshua's vest there. So I had all my windows down and they asked if I had marijuana. This is federal property. Hooray, the Hoover Dam is open. Two years ago, it was closed because of the coronavirus. Let's see how uh, close I can get with this Hoover Dam snow globe. By the way, I cracked it at that scenic view. Yeah, so water's leaking out. A perfect uh, analogy, metaphor, for what's happening here at Lake Mead. Oh, you're vaccinated. Oh, I can't get to you. <laughs> you uh, are. Look at that. You are the coronavirus. Look at you. you oh, you're going to have an easy time breathing be because of the vaccine. Oh, but you'll have that 5G communist autistic microchips through you. Well, yeah, I, I keep waiting for Bill Gates to start talking to me and he just won't. And it's really beginning to make me mad. I was promised nano chips and I want yeah. them. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a robot. You know, it's not. Ah. Uh, robot with vaccines. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're a music robot. Exactly. What's that kind? Hmm. Okay. So should go into that building right over there. Yeah, what do they got? What do they got? What do they got? What do they got? <gasps> Snow globe. They sell them here. Yep, won't find any better humor. So, uh, get any Fallout fans recently? Huh? Fallout fans, have they come by? No, not yet. I was gonna say that's the first one I've seen so far. Oh, all right, uh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> So hard to part with. Yeah, I'm gonna skip the tour and leave the snow globe here. Yeah, security might take it. Yeah, they deserve it. Hey, keep in mind, this snow globe is cracked. Uh, it was an accident. Yeah, security knows what's up with Fallout. Fans come in here. Hmm. Maybe I should have taken that tour. So Caesar, NCR, House, even the Yes Man, they want Hoover Dam for the power. But, but really, could Hoover Dam alone uh, power Las Vegas? He who controls the dam controls Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. But because that's where a lot of the power comes from. Yeah. Uh, does most 
of our power come from Hoover Dam or? No, because Hoover Dam was built before Las Vegas was really big, it was about maybe 10,000 people here, the compact doesn't give Las Vegas a lot of power. Most of the power comes from coal. They're starting to do solar, which I'm sure you've seen driving up down in Ivanpah. But the interesting thing, another thing I really like about the game is the fact that they really hit on the themes of Western history in the United States, mm -hmm. where Americans moved West in search of resources to exploit the resources. And here, the NCR is doing it, but moving to the East. And it's the same exact thing. And they're, it's also like in the actual history of the American West, everybody believes that the West is this blank slate, that they can just do what they want. So the NCR believes, okay, we're gonna come here and we're gonna collect taxes and extract power. You know, House believes he's gonna build his little techno utopia and go to the stars. Caesar believes he's gonna have his Rome and it'll be the center of his new Roman empire. So it's kind of, and that just totally plays into to the history of the West in the United States. Yeah, and it does, it also, you know, ties into the actual history of the conflicts between the ranchers, the miners, and the farmers, mm -hmm. all who are competing for the same resources. So it's kind of interesting. Like in a lot of ways, if you reskin the game, you could almost play it as a, like you could give it to history students who were learning about the late 19th century, early 20th century in the West, but you'd have to do, you have to do a pretty big mod. Hmm. The NCR, the bear. Caesar's Legion, the bull. Is there a message about the stock market in this game? Okay, this isn't Fallout, but you really gotta visit this place in Boulder City. skate park here. Turn right into the parking lot. Man, that looks like something that could be a legendary weapon. I'm actually from San Diego, and I make these documentaries about Fallout New Vegas by going to real places. You saw nothing. Got it? Uh, just well, searchlight is just like uh, just like any other small town you visit. Yeah, looks like it's got history here. Yeah, plenty of structures. Yeah, well, about its history. Yeah, Searchlight Nevada pretty much is as the small town America feel. I know there's also Searchlight uh, Nevada. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there like a history of Searchlight? Because when you go there in the game, it's all like, you know, full of feral ghouls irradiated, and abandoned yeah. and radiated. Yeah, I mean, it's no. Got it's got an airport it's, and churches. You know, it's basically water one of towers. those. Yeah, it's one of those former mining camps, kind of like Good Springs. And there's a lot of them around southern Nevada that boomed for a while and then declined. I mean, probably the most famous thing that Searchlight is famous for now is former Senator Harry Reid oh. was born there. That's probably what Searchlight is best known for. And it's also down on the way if you go to Laughlin, which, yeah, I mean, that would be another cool idea for a mod would be a Laughlin oh. adventure, you know, down on the Colorado River. Hmm. Can I get Danny Trejo to be in this? He did voice one of the companion characters, Raul the Ghoul. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, here's his agent's email. You can't oh, 
that was quick. Oh, uh, he's out filming a movie. Thank you. I'm gonna go find him. Let's see, uh, Black Mountain. How far is that? Black Mountain. They got radio antennas. Is Raul there? Is he being held captive? Name's Raul. Raul Alfonso Tejada. I'm the mechanic, bro. Raul! Raul! Where are you, Raul? Raul! Roger in Black Mountain. Raul! Let's talk! What does Danny Trejo mean to you? He's a fantastic actor and a really, really great guy, and he does wonderful things for the community. And uh, I have a great deal of respect for his talent and his humanity. Uh, Danny's more open to working with amateur filmmakers, but uh, he's, he has a very busy schedule, and he really is out saving the world and, and setting up taco shops. He is, and they're good taco shops. So you might get this a lot, but uh, is Danny here today? He's not here today. Okay, thank you. Hey, he tagged me. Do you know I have a chip on my shoulder? You have the best tacos and chips. And he has a donut, that donut shop too on the corner of Santa Monica and, and Highland. Quite good. Oh, how you been, buddy? Oh yeah, this is uh, something you can buy from GameStop or you know one of those. Oh yeah, I got got this years ago. Yeah, you can. Yeah, these are these construction kits uh, for pit boys. Hmm. Hey, Danny makes an appearance in the Fallout New Vegas Collectors DVD. What does Danny have to say about Raul in that? Raul is like a very smart, very old ghoul. He's got a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience, but he uses it sparingly. He's also pretty sharp. Hey, Danny's doing a signing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Okay, uh, all right, uh, thanks. Give it, give it my best. Bye. Well, uh, representatives of Danny Trejo have politely asked that he not appear in this documentary. Oh, well. But from what Danny told me during his appearances, well, here's what he had to say about Raul. Oh, yeah, Raul, he's a real cool character. And, uh, hey, doing those roles, they're a lot of fun. It took you long enough. So feel like going out. So I think I'll, I'll give him and his agent a break. It did good. Little clips in a documentary are better than some big long thing. Yes. Okay, here's a real documentary filmmaker with some real documentary tips. Uh, Mr. Cohen, uh, what, what tips do you have for making good documentaries? A good research. I think a good research is uh, the best thing to do documentaries. A good research and a story to tell. You have to have a story to tell. I think that's the main thing. If you have something to say, it's very easy to, to, to put it in, in images, and then you have to research. So it is true everything you say. Gotcha. Okay. So one day I went to San Diego State to see Eisner Award winning comic artist Frank Quitely talk about his comics work. But then he ended up showing this video uh, that he made with Bo Moore Whiskey. And it was about the this myth from Scottish lore about how these people trapped the devil in a distillery. You know, I had to talk to him about it. And here's what we talked about. Well, you're exploring the, uh, this island, and I live in Scotland, right? Scotland, yeah. Okay, and, uh, and you're just looking for inspiration to, uh, find the devil. Uh -huh. Well, 
Yeah, and then I'll make this documentary about exploring, you know, Las Vegas, because there's part of the game called New Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk more about that. You know, just to see, you know, if people are familiar with it, aspects of it, comparing it, but really familiar with this distillery and the farming and the folklore, and you're finding the devil. I don't know if I would go as far as to say I found the devil. I certainly found the, I found various versions of the myth about the devil in the round church uh, going into the Bowmore distillery and uh, and I created a visual for that devil drawing on different influences primarily from Scotland, Ireland and, uh, and a little further afield as well and I tried to combine these to come up with a, a visual that was visually most people would immediately identify with uh, but that was somewhat unique in that it was combining different features. My documentary is about seeing New Vegas, comparing it to the video game, mm -hmm. comparing Las Vegas to New Vegas and mm -hmm. leaving snow globes behind uh, you know, for people. Definitely doing that for uh, this uh, tour of, of, the, of this area, so mm -hmm. find inspiration, possibly find the devil and put on a whiskey product. I dare say if I find the devil, he wouldn't mind having a whiskey. Huh, good. Wow, you know, I take a lot of pride in making this documentary. Who knows what other sins I'm doing while, when I'm making this. Maybe I have so much pride I may go to hell. Well, if that's the case, maybe the devil will tell me I made something decent. Who knows what Satan will tell me. Maybe he'll compliment me for, for following my passion. As ridiculous as it is. Oh, the devil better have Nuka-Cola ready. possibly get Zachary Levi. He is currently playing Shazam. Can you give any reasons what separates New Vegas from the rest of the games that creates this lasting appeal? I could see why people really like this game because okay. it just stands out so much. It, it, it just almost started like its own new branch of games. Um, that it's based more of like a almost classic crime story. It has a very different attitude and appeal. There are some people that Fallout 4 is their favorite games as well. I can say know? that. And, stuff. and there are very different people. And I think that this is the beauty in the Fallout franchise that each game brought a very, very, very different elements and stories and appeal and attitude, and you could be hooked. And I could tell you right now that 10 years from now, there will be many people that, that Fallout 76 will be their favorite games. Uh, you know what? Fallout 76, you know, it's definitely had its problems. And uh, one thing that stands out about 76... You know, as long as it's online, it can be a game worth revisiting, you know, so once it's updated. So who knows? You can play the quests in, that are around in 76 for now, but then it gets updated and it gives you something to go back to. 76, I mean, oh, there's new content. I should check that out. Clean Vegas is a very open-ended game as well. So you could just, you know, work your way in it and on it. And it's still, it feels fresh every time you're playing it, even though it's not an online game. It, it takes time for people to realize um, and to understand and to really get into these Fallout games since they're so loaded. I think I'm in the wrong Sierra Madre. We also, I talk about the uh, Sierra Madre Ooh, yeah. casino. Uh, that's nowhere specific, but I assume it's near Laughlin, but that's a bit out of the way. So when I do Sierra Madre, I go to South Point. Yeah, that's cool. I think that, that could be cool. Another one that's kind of could be good is Lake Las Vegas. Oh, yes. I have a Reddit, Reddit comment uh, that there's, a, there's like a hotel there with a Spanish vibe to it. Yeah, I get suggestions on Reddit about these, so yeah. Figured, you know, I hear things like that. Figured, sequel. Go 
Casino Montelago. Ah, place looks uh, closed down. Perfect! Buried beneath a blood red cloud. So I go to places and ask if they get Fallout fans. Uh, it's just with places like Montelago and South Point. The Sierra Madre Casino is not based on them. It's just something, you know, the Fallout creators came up with, you know, for downloadable content. So yeah, Fallout fans don't come here, but I do to hide a snow globe. If you didn't already force the lock to the gate. Huh. I'm kind of reminded of Sierra Madre. It has those Spanish-style ceiling tiles. Yeah, it's uh, pretty quiet here. So there's a hotel open here, hosted by the Hilton, sits on Lake Las Vegas. They do events here. Yeah, some people behind me were are here for a wedding. Wow, I wish I knew about this place sooner. I probably would have left the snow globe from the last time here. I mean, this is clearly a walkway for shopping, but I don't see many shops open. Uh, it looks like they got jazz shows. They got that going. Yeah, it's actually more active on this side. Ooh, weddings happen here. Uh, looks like they specialize in weddings. Oh, real estate. Okay, I was wrong. There's more active businesses here. It's a very Fallout-esque tale oh. where, I mean, they wanted, they started developing this in the 80s and it was basically going to be this vacation place away from Vegas, like a small self-contained town. So kind of like the Sierra Madre, but the first, definitely the first person went bankrupt. Maybe the second person did. Then they finally did do it. You know, it's there. It's kind of, I mean, some days it's busy, some days it's not, but you have casinos and you have golf course and it's not and there's a little town too which reminds me a lot of the sierra madre but i don't know if that's what they had in mind i think it kind of matches up with where the bunker is the bunker? in the game oh. that you go to to get there ah. i think it kind of matches up with that because it's on the way to lake mead so it's down on that quadrant of the map it's interesting but no poison gas so i asked about why the casinos closed uh what guy can tell me hilton had some issues with the paperwork. Oh well. Huh. Man, this place is like the Sierra Madre and it doesn't know it's the Sierra Madre. Pretty underrated in Las Vegas. What's that beeping? Hmm, went away. Oh, it was a nice walk here. Uh, okay, let's get this... Sierra Madre Casino over with. Okay, they're being pretty stingy here, so let's, so let's do this. Okay, right up the stairs. this vase and some and some Sierra Madre poker chips well that was a enjoyable walk here good to find uh, little places like this anyway about time to get going the Nellis air show is tomorrow and uh, Oh, look at all that gold. No, 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 no. The point is to let go. Let go of being in debt.
Can anyone really let go? <laughs> Orange colored sky. Uh, yes, you over there? Uh, what would you say would be the hardest snow globe? Let's see, hardest snow globe. Actually, I think the hardest one would be Nellis because it is an Air Force base, you need a clearance. I can only settle for putting it, you know, next to the entrance. But in, in November of next year, there will, there will be an air show. I'm at the Las Vegas Speedway. I got directed here by Nellis Air Force Base Security because this is where people park for the air show. I mean, a lot of people have already parked. Should have come here earlier, but I was watching cartoons in the morning. My fault. Anyway, I'm gonna take the bus and see how close I can get this uh, Nellis, this Nellis uh, snow globe on the base. I did it. As a civilian, I made it on the Nellis Air Force Base for the air show. Now, of course, uh, there are boundaries and there's security all around. So, I just gotta act like, uh, just act normal. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. The, you know, Nellis definitely is a huge thing. It's been since the early 50s. I mean, it was first the Nevada yeah. um, gunnery range, the, the Las Vegas gunnery range, but they decommissioned and recommissioned it. So, I mean, that's that's something, and again, it's a great local thing because that is, you know, for a long time was a big part of the economy. So it's pretty cool they have that yeah. in the game too. Like I, I met some people at Waste Time Weekend who were like, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the Nellis, this air show in November. That couldn't happen last year. It doesn't look like it's happening this year, but huh. figured this next year, that'll be the next snow globe trip and it'll be on Nellis. Yeah, I've actually been there on the base. Okay. So there's a prison camp there. Oh. So it's FBC Federal Prison Camp Nellis idea. I wasn't there as a as a prisoner. I was there to do it. I interviewed somebody. Oh. But um yeah, it's not necessarily the most uplifting place, <laughs> but it's a prison, so. So Nellis has its own prison. Yeah, well it's part of the federal prison system and they just put the prison there, so basically and it was, you know, again, I was just there to interview somebody, but it didn't look like a place I'd want to spend a lot of time. Oh, we get to go on this big boy. <laughs> ah, Sonic! Here we have prospered and multiplied. Here are mighty guns to destroy any savages who might try to harm us. Just as a warning, my covert bandaging skills are a little rusty. Well, I'm about on the uh, civilian perimeter for the Nellis Air Force show, so there's the gate. And those look like, uh, they remind me of the barracks, where the uh, history lesson is. But I can't go there, go that far. So I'm gonna put this Nellis Air Force Base snow globe right where the porta potty is. Sanitation's gonna be, get surprised. Wow, there's, there's lines to get into every plane. It's like Comic-Con here. States certainly has probably a lot of nuclear weapons stockpiled. Uh, what other countries have stockpiled nuclear weapons? I'm thinking China and Russia. Yeah, I mean, Russians are the closest. You know, I don't think China was anywhere, ever anywhere near parity with the U.S. I mean, they have them. They could do damage, but like basically the Russians, I don't right, know don't right now if they're over the U.S. or negative. I know it wasn't until the 70s that they reached parity and then they, they had more. The good news is that if it was a limited nuclear exchange, Vegas probably isn't targeted because there's no nuclear bombers at Nellis. 
And I'm not sure, I don't remember off the top of my head, if, I think Nellis is like just about at the outside of the range that a nuclear bomber could land there to refuel. But I don't think we wouldn't be a first tier target. We'd probably be a second or third tier target. So All right. hopefully if there is an exchange, it's a limited one. Oh, this, oh, this Game Boy? Yeah, you know. Oh, it's a Game Boy with a camera in it. A Game Boy camera. Interesting. That is cool. <laughs> oh, so you recognize me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Fallout fan. Fallout fan. Yeah. I, <laughs> yep. I make documentaries about Fallout, oh, so so I'm uh, here to now I'm uh, here on the uh, Nellis Air Show. Oh, nice. Did people recognize me? I'm sure some did. People don't really don't uh, dress up for an air show. I mean, who does that? Of course, uh, I didn't really speak with any of the staff. You know, military types. Eh. Hopefully they get back to me when I make this documentary. My historian friend who, who's done a lot of writing on uh, uh, World War II planes explained the bomber in the lake and Lake yeah. Mead. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, a take on that? Yeah, I mean, there really are. There really is. Uh, they really did crash. You know, and Howard Hughes actually crashed there too, I believe. You know, he oh. uh, he crashed quite. He crashed a couple of times. He, the most famous one was over Beverly Hills. That's when he got hooked into the drugs and got a little bit funny. Uh, yeah, that's when we uh, bring up how we would spend a lot of time in a hotel suite uh, with long nails and shoe boxes. Yeah. And that <laughs> yeah. In influenced an episode of The Simpsons. Yeah. These Yanks for nothing. Grove Street! Hmm, hmm, hmm. Should I do this 99 more times? I could get arrested. Mm. Hey, you know what this reminds me of? Thanks. Yeah, walking down the street in a vault suit and a vault boy mask. Not everyone's gonna get it, but some people are gonna be surprised. There's the Ultra Lux Casino, which is made up of you know people wearing masks, looking yeah. fancy. Uh, what, is it, what would you say ma matches a casino in Las Vegas? That that's like that. I would say that's more the luxury places, so probably Bellagio or oh. Rim. Oh yeah, Bellagio, Bellagio has the uh, water fountains. Yeah, uh, the Ultralux, the White Glove Society has its you know, dark secrets. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah. Would you say that's based on any urban legends in not Vegas or that I've ever heard of? I mean, okay. they've accused people of a lot of things here, but cannibalism is not one of them. Spoiler: I know there's the also the Gamora Casino. Uh, yes, yeah. I know that's kind of based on the Sahara. Figured, yeah, Some, somewhat the Sahara in the dunes. Yeah, that more, and kind of the more grind joint type places. Grind joint. Yeah, as opposed to the luxury places like the Ultralux. Yeah, like, you know, I, I once walked on Fremont Street and I, you know, saw their, uh, you know, ladies with the whips and chains. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you find those types around. Yeah, they kind of nailed that too in the game. You know? Yes. That really does happen. And, and the other games, you know, that take place in Washington, D.C., Boston, West Virginia, uh, you know, you see how dysfunctional these worlds are, but right. then, in, then you enter New Vegas. Sure, the world around it is more dysfunctional, but it feels as if it's a lot of it has been preserved, as if Vegas never changed. Well, not exactly, but the casinos definitely seems like in a working shape, some kind of like more like 50s working shape, but they were okay. like, you know, definitely in good working shape and, and you could take advantage of that. And again, Another thing that was uh, different in Vegas is, is that at some point I really had to create more of an urban feel, mm -hmm. which um, in other uh, games that was not existing at all. 
um, because everything was vault, was under, um, you know, underground, and the underground elements in most games are very prominent. In Vegas, actually, we almost did not have any underground um, zones. Everything was either in the desert or in the city or in the mountains. Hmm. So, so the whole score is way more out there. It's less claustrophobic. It's less sort of like dense. It's way more open. And again, it's a very, very big difference. So well, there's a lot of history from Las Vegas. Uh, do you have any favorite stories and that and inspirations that went into you know your work? You know, I've always remembered the story about the Hilton Flamingo and how the whole thing um, started. And I, I myself, you know, you know, I kind of like I really like going to Vegas from time. I'm not a big gambler, but I just really like the electric, you know, uh, atmosphere there. That mm-hmm. people always seems to be just happy. And no matter if they're winning mm-hmm. or losing, they're happy. There is something totally surreal about Vegas, which I really like because in, in our day-to-day life, you know, we are embedded in reality so much, in our reality. By the time that if you enter a Vegas hotel, no matter what, you are being surrounded, uh, completely evoked uh, by uh, their own man-made reality, which to me is such a great escape. Ah, made it. Probably the most well-known Fallout location. I mean, fans visit all the time. Pioneer Saloon, Prospector Saloon, and the Good Springs General Store, or the... What's it called? The Ghost, uh, the Ghost Cafe. Now it's a good. Now it's a general store. Yeah, it's happening now on Biker Sunday. Well, it certainly happened. You know, a lot happened. Uh, thank you. Well, man, it was certainly quite a party last July for their New Vegas party. I'm at the Good Spring Cemetery. The fallout party is tomorrow, so I can imagine people are going to stop by the Good Spring Cemetery. So look, they can find their own Good Spring snow globe. Just be like the courier in the game. Yep, my information's on the bottom. There's a there's a QR code. Hopefully, I get messages. Let's see how this experiment goes. Let's just say you found uh, bobbleheads or snow globes in real life from the game. What would you? How would you react? I'd freak out and I'd be like, oh yeah, goody, goody. And I'd put it in my pocket and run away. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. In the past, I've spoken with a bartender named Eve and a former manager named Tom. Both have moved on from working there and now the saloon is under the management of Someone who calls himself Old Man Liver. Yeah, hey, you're Old Man Liver? I am. Nice to meet you. Hey, you look familiar. Hey, hey you're you. Easy Pete. Hey, you caught me first. Yeah, I am Easy Pete. Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? Wow. Great to meet you all. Thank yeah. you for coming. We appreciate it. Really appreciate to be you here. being here. Oh, well, so, uh, heard you're having a fallout party tomorrow. Yep, big day. First time we've ever had a giant fallout celebration. Wow. So, we're hoping from here it just builds and it's an annual thing. The tour buses are coming out. 
No, so, thanks for coming to check it all out. So we've right. got this whole setup over wow. here. You can see we got the Xbox video game. We've got the Nuka Cola. This is a lot of stuff that people have donated to us. Yeah, I think I um, left the snow globe at the cemetery a long time and someone brought it in. We just recently set up this Xbox here so people can play Fallout while they're actually on the premises of the Pioneer Saloon and right, Good Springs right. General Store. We got our flags up here. Ah. We don't choose sides. We're neutral as we are with everything with the Pioneer. <laughs> and we are in the Legion. Right? right? We stay neutral just like with politics and motorcycle clubs and street gangs. So that's part of our, our mantra. And then we're, we're lucky enough to have Gordy here who's been our CMO chief maintenance officer for about 20 years. And uh, allegedly they actually based the character off of uh, the character of Easy Pete off of Gordy. Hey. So do you, do you actually carry dynamite with you? Or? I don't have it with me now. But That's good because that would be not compliant with county regulations. So I'm okay, glad. Well, just in case the uh, prisoners get loose. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I can handle that part. <laughs> Okay, so uh, how'd you come into ownership of uh, the Pioneer Saloon? Well, apparently sort of this area? There, there was a, uh, a poker game that occurred with the previous owners and uh, I'd probably be the second person killed in a poker game here on the premises, so luckily that did not happen. But uh, yeah, acquired it last year in September, and uh, we uh, we are embracing our Fallout background, and it's it's one of these things that's very important to us because we have so many historical things that have happened here on the premises and people talk about like poker game where someone was shot in 1915 and 1940s with Clark Gable and Carol Lombard and her plane crash over here and but then now it's nice to have a younger generation that's interested in the property and so we keep keep having historical things happen to us which is amazing and God knows what's going to be in the future so Yes, I've been here before. I've heard people from Europe and all over. Oh, yeah. Just so, all items. Items. Yep. So every day we have Fallout fans come to check out the property. And then tomorrow we're going to have people from all over Australia, Europe, all over the country. I've already met people coming in during the week to just check it out. And they're from all every state you can imagine. Yeah, we're, we're hand making some uh, sarsaparilla. So that's going to be our, our item we introduce tomorrow for our first fallout celebration. So we're canning, we're bottling up some sarsaparilla. Right. And you chose July 8th because it's National Video Game Day. That's correct. Okay, well, your Facebook event says 50 people interested in going. Are going. Think the, the turnout's going to be bigger? Oh, uh, yeah, we have a few hundred for wow. sure. Um, it's very widespread and we're expecting several hundred people. Okay, what can people expect on July 8th, your All right. day? So, yeah, it's going to be one day this year, and then if it goes well, we'll expand it maybe two or three days uh, in coming years. We're starting at 9 a.m. With, with Fallout food specials and the sarsaparilla. 10 a.m., Easy Pete's going to be signing posters and putting his autograph on there. Then we've got um, Monica's band starting at noon, and she's the, the singing bartender that they based the character Trudy the bartender after. Also not the yeah. girl, Trudy the bartender. Also mayor. Also mayor. So mayor. she's mayor, and in real life, she heads up the Good Springs Township Council Advisory so Council. So I actually so. am the closest thing that Good Springs has to a mayor. Right? Uh, that's a little life imitating art there now, isn't it? All right, what's the name of uh, Monica's band? Her regular band is called the B-Side Band but they may be changing the name a little bit for tomorrow, so we'll see. Then we've got a uh, $5 pitchers from four to seven, and then crazy fallout karaoke at seven o'clock till midnight and somewhere in there probably in the six o'clock range we're going to do a little costume contest for a man in a checkered suit harry went down towards uh crim well i've been looking for him <laughs> welcome to good springs you seen, uh, you seen courier six? oh there's a lot of couriers inside so uh you're you're also known for uh making friends on a tv show but you also make enemies it is what it is you know you fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking prick. Oh, you know that? I found your courier. You I'm gonna beat the tar out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Put this on live leak. Uh, uh, in a documentary see, next year. We'll see about it. Might have to call some friends of mine. Yo! What in the goddamn? 
There's the Benny character. Uh, yeah. He's based on Bugsy Siegel. He sure is. I was at the Flamingo, which he founded. Yeah. And uh, Well, not really. Okay. It was a guy, a guy named Billy Wilkerson who founded it. All right. And Ben Siegel just took it over when Wilkerson had some money problems and it ended up opening it. But Wilkerson founded it. Well, makes uh, it, it kind of makes it interesting and kind of does fit in with the character, too. So All right, well... It, so Makes it kind, even deeper. Kind of like how uh, Mr. House is running Vegas, but, and Benny. But then yeah. the Benny ends up running at yeah. the tops. Yeah. Oh, well, either uh, annexed or... Uh, annexed. Or have a... Oh. Well, since uh, we took the dam, supply lines have opened up a little bit. Anything near the California border has been annexed uh, as part of the new 6th Mojave State of the Republic. So oh, that's good. our Ford operating base here in Good Springs. Great, great. Yeah, come Sorry. on through, have a look. Yeah, feel free. We made documents, uh, thievery is punishable by uh, arrest and execution. Don't oh, worry, I'm a law-abiding citizen. Oh. Oh, my mother's been wanting one of these. Hey, you, found, you went looking for my snow globes? Oh, we went for your snow globes. You're we Victor? heard tell that uh, Victor uh, placed them. Well, I managed to find one. Oh yeah? Yes. I like them, they're cool. And uh, on the bottom I had a QR code that looks just like the one on his chest. Interesting, mysterious. Yeah. Not sure what a QR code is, but yeah, take something. yeah. Oh, take him to Lucky Thirty Eight. Uh, someone, someone will really. give you two thousand caps for him. Really? Ooh, that's uh, too good to caps. be true. That's but to get into the strip. Yeah, he's been. Go oh that. yeah, he's been looking for him for hundreds of years. Go look. Go uh. Go bring it. I never see him. Good luck. I'm filming a documentary. Let's go. That's badass, man. I guess. It's all right. There's already another documentary. It's called Lost Snow, a Fallout Snow Globe Road Trip. I'm called Snow Globe Guy sometimes. Really? Yeah. Well, that's fun. I like that. Thanks. Oh, it's the puppet. Hey there. Welcome. Making a documentary. Anything to say? Good to be here. We're all good to be here. Why don't you look fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? That's all right. Yeah, it's gonna just get the <laughs> There were people at Good Springs who drove all that way and stood in the hot weather, wearing bandages and a and heavy vest. And I, and I salute them. Yeah, three D modeled an action Abe. Action, that's what it is. The Lincoln Memorial. And look, here's action Abe. You want like an actual signature or here have some caps. Thank you. Hello there. Hey. How goes you? Oh, just making the climb. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The view's worth it, that's for sure. In these games, there's usually treasure at the top of the mountain. The treasure is the memories you make. Of course. <laughs> hey there. Yeah, glad you enjoy your, your photo. This guy right here put out snow globes for everybody at the cemetery. And I couldn't find one because he hit them very, very well. When you get to the gate, there, there's a note there. It says, hey, courier, if you're looking for the snow globes, they've now been moved. And we've hidden them all over the cemetery. And whoever did that is not the same guy who put the snow globes there. Well, howdy. Welcome to Good Springs. Y'all have a good time. Enjoy the party. Hey, courier, if you're here for snow globes, I've taken it a step further and hit them around the cemetery. Good luck, have fun. You found a snow globe in the graveyard? Yep. It's Good. So. <laughs> what happens yes. if fate should stay here? Completely disagree. Cause my thoughts on you have traveled all the way back home with me. And if I well, I did not want to disturb the dead, but leave, here I am disturbing the dead. Sorry. Uh, have you seen any snow globes? Spirits? Oh, so that looks like a snow globe. Oh, no, no, they're just mason jars. Well, I 
went looking for snow globes in the cemetery, but didn't really find them. I think I'm cursed. Uh, uh. You're vaccinated? Yeah. Okay. Hey, anyone want to play caravan? Oh. Oh. Hi there, you work for Obsidian? Yes. Do you watch my documentary? Yes. Alright, here's a snow globe. Thank you for the snow globe. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing here, Kimball? Nobody invited you. Hey, as his personal bodyguard. He's, here. Yeah. He's, He's here, here for the annexation. Why are you making me pay taxes? <laughs> I'm not exactly in my most ranger and mood. We're from Vault 13. And um, our vault is in critical condition right now. We're looking for a water chip, and based on how I'm seeing your guys' water system spraying everywhere, um, I, we would really appreciate it if we could borrow it for a couple centuries. Or steal if you would kindly. And next. What if there was a world something, 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 all the Nuka-Cola. Something, 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 all the Nuka Cola. Something, something, Nuka World. Now, what's Coca Cola and why is it in, on the strip next to MMs and such? Entry number 10. <laughs> Entry number 11. <laughs> So, funny story. Someone went looking for the Big MT snow globe in 2020. Now she's here, she's been hitting me up. I better go give it to her. Excuse me, 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 excuse me. I mean to do this, I mean to do this. Excuse me, excuse me. There you go. Thank you. I thought somebody else took it at the cemetery. Oh, it was me two months later. Thank you so much. Thank this you. Makes my life. Thank you. Well, I, I met someone who actually went looking for my snow globe. Uh, one of them. I actually did he find it. him or she find him. It's more like uh, two months after I did my last trip. I was I happened to be in Vegas again, and I picked up that snow globe because eh, no one looked got it. But it turns out she found out about it months later and was like, "Hey, where is it?" Then she ended up at the Good Springs <laughs> party, and I was like, "Okay, here you go. You want it. You want this." Hey, 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 who won the lottery? Yeah, I won the lottery! Bro! Did he smell that air? Did it drink it like boo? Yeah! Gary, 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 Gary! In my previous documentary, I talked to a person named Tom. Have you heard from him? Yeah, Tom is a, a previous owner of the Pioneer Saloon, so he's the one that uh, lost it to me in a poker okay. game, yeah. <laughs> which I'm not supposed to really talk about because I guess my attorney doesn't like it when yeah. I talk about. <laughs> Looks like you had a high luck skill. <laughs> you won me yeah. out of the deal. Five aces. I noticed that, uh, do you think Clark Gable looks like Mr. House? I know Clark, I know Mr. House is based on uh, Howard Hughes, maybe Nikola Tesla, maybe Walt Disney, but I think I see some Clark Gable in Mr. House. <laughs> That's, uh, I have no comment. Easy Pete. I see one Mr. Rogers in. I gotta talk to you about your restroom. Uh, you get a lot of Fallout fans like to put their, well, uh, signatures there. Ain't nothing like pissing on a bag of ice. 
Okay. That's, that's what they do. I've right, read. I've right. read that. Yeah, that that's that's a popular thing. But uh, yeah. yeah. So when when we took over, the general store was called Ghost Town Cafe. Right. We changed it back to the Good Springs General Store. A, because that's what it is in the video game, and B, that's historically more accurate of what it's been over the last 109 years. So oh. we are, this is, we are in a, a room that's, that's uh, stamped 10 from Sears and Roebuck back in the day. This is uh, both this building and the Good Springs General Store, Nevada Historical Landmarks. So we can never change the ceilings or walls, not that we ever would want to, because it's that's amazing. Uh, these two buildings are historical landmarks. Um, there's a lot of great stories. Um, I don't know if you saw the bullet holes coming in oh, bullet holes. or not. Yeah, so just to the left of the door when you're walking in the saloon are these three bullet holes, which I've had several military people confirm that they are real bullet holes. Some people believe they date back to a 1950 poker game where someone was shot, an out of work miner got belligerent, he was drunk, he tried to cheat, dealer shot him, lay dead on the floor for 10 hours before the coroner made it. So a lot of people believe that Paul Kosky, the guy that was shot, is one of the many ghosts that walked the premises. Oh, well, I've heard some ghost stories. I've heard him in Amargosa and figured maybe if there's some ghost stories. Oh, here. yeah, yeah. Even that telephone right there, that old timey looking phone there where that we have to explain to young folks what that actually is. And <laughs> that, the other day, uh, one of our uh, Cooks was telling a, a ghost story about what, what had happened to him, and that phone started ringing. Now, the phone works, but it's never been plugged in, and it's nowhere near an outlet. There's always occurrences. All the various servers and bartenders that have been here for years, they all have their own stories, and they're all pretty spooky. The table that the guy got shot at is still here in the Pioneer. is right there by the bullet hole. Yeah, it's the actual original table. It's funny because even since I've taken over, I've had some really weird things. I've been here by myself in the middle of the night, f seen things in the corner of my eye, felt presences, heard weird noises that were not human. Have you got any one of those uh, ghost uh, shows to come yeah, here? Yeah, we, uh, we are on all the, all the ghost adventures and all those types. They all stop by here. And we still do a pretty regular filmings and paranormal investigations and those kind of things. So the ghost is, is a part of the vibe and they've, they've never hurt anybody. They're just mis mischievous. What just makes Good Springs so magical? What, what I, makes it special? I tell you, the, the town is a unique... What makes it special in a, you know, living by a city known for gambling and, yeah. and everything else? Well, that's the funny thing. We're close to Vegas, which is around 2 million people, but yet the town of Good Springs is only 200. So, but back in the day when the Pioneer Saloon opened, we were actually just as big as Las Vegas. In fact, they would, people over there would come here for their fine shopping, like confectionaries and dress and fine dining and that kind of thing. The so. mining town aspect is one of the things that gives Good Springs its character. And then this property itself, there's something magical about it that you just can't, you can't identify or place, but everyone that comes here loves it. And if you're connected with that energy or if you're a psychic, or anything like people feel a lot of presence of the historical aspects and the haunted aspects and spiritual. And there's just something magical about the property, probably because of the history, but also the creativity. It's a, it's a creative community and that, that adds to the lore out here as well. We actually even have a guitar behind the bar that a lot of the musicians that have played here have signed and anyone at any time can just ask to grab that guitar and play. So we encourage spontaneous creativity and whether it's music or paintings. Okay, anyone, yeah. anyone except Kurt Russell? Anyone except Kurt Russell, that's correct. Uh, what do you think about Good Springs? I think it's cool. Okay. You know, I, I really like what they've done there with the folks at the Pioneer have done. I think it's really cool how they've really embraced the whole game, you know, and people can go there in costume, people oh, yeah. can go there. And I, I kind of like, what I find really interesting is the way the Pioneer has genuine historical stuff, or I'll put it in quotes, you know, from dating back into the 19 teens when Good Springs was really a thing to, and they also have the fallout stuff in there. So it's kind of interesting. So you don't really know what they, what's history and what's the future and what's real and what's not. Was it you who mentioned on Reddit that you went to the school or tried to go to the yeah, school? Yeah, so I, this is kind of funny. So I, I was there with my daughters and we were just poking around and I went in the actual school and I felt really dumb because wow. there, there's a teacher there like working on Sunday, getting her stuff ready. I'm like, hey, can I come in? <laughs> just make sure. And I couldn't quite explain to her like, yes, I been in here in a video game.
So that's cool. That made its way into New Vegas. So definitely into developers and designers. Certainly, they were good at picking what they wanted to put in the game. Well, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, likewise. Las Vegas has gotten bigger uh, over the years. Has Good Springs gotten bigger? No, Good Springs uh, stay is a pretty even 200 people coming and going. I, I don't see it changing because people don't come out here to develop it. You people in Good Springs want to get away and live a rural life, so I don't, I don't think it's going to expand with Vegas. But at some point, Vegas will expand as far out here as Gene and Good Springs. So that. That will happen. Yeah, why Why do you like coming out here well, yourself? Well, you know, Fallout New Vegas got me interested, but you know, I just love the small town feel that's just away from the city. Be very hungry, very thirsty. I heard the, bur the burgers and beer are good. Oh yeah, my we're gosh. world known worldwide for our burgers. Yeah, sp man. specifically the ghost burger. Well, old man liver, thanks, hey. for, thanks for talking to me. Thanks no, for thanks for coming Glad out. To talk to you. No, it's, it's yeah. a, a privilege for us, to, yeah. and we, we appreciate you coming out and enjoying the property with us, and we hope more and more people come throughout the years. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? My documentary or my Bobble Get In project? Um, I, you know, I think that this is really, really, really great that people are um, actually supporting the community in any ways and making, uh, making uh, these kind of documentaries is definitely a big contribution to our community and the gaming community uh, and the Fallout community, which, as you know, is, is big. So that's like paying uh, homage to, uh, to our community. So kudos. This was Einon Zer's uh, birthday weekend. Uh, let's wish Enon Zer a happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Einon. Let's wish him a happy birthday. Thank you, Good Springs, for your generosity, for Fallout fans, and being in my documentary, Lost New. Come to Good Springs anytime. We'll see you soon. This is it. This is where the third journey ends. It's like I've been doing this for three years. Now it's time I, you know, I just might be ending these Fallout New Vegas road trips once and for all. Maybe there's just nothing left. Well, if this is the end, I'm to put on my best face. This is where I let go of something and move on. Not done yet. There are still some more things to go over. You're right. What happened to those snow globes? Well, time to play. Find that snow globe. Well, this was quite a journey. And now for the part you've been waiting for. The results of the snow globe trip. All foes were posted to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook groups. Reddit, and even TikTok. Now then, our first snow globe, 
Novak and Cabazon. Unreported. You know, it's a popular attraction. People are just going to pick them up. And not everyone's going to, you know, take a photo and put it on their social media. It's just like OG says. I'd freak out and I'd be like, oh yeah, goody, goody. And I'd put it in my pocket and run away. <laughs> okay. Next one. Lonesome Road in Baker, the gateway to Death Valley. Who made history this time? Well, Las Vegas resident and Fallout fan who goes by MB Carl made the 90 mile trip to get it. He also goes by Mo Mojave Mayhem in Fallout 76. Not to be confused with the lady who did the Good Spring song. Great work, Carl. Nipton, who went to the Nipton to create some magic. Well, this, the Nipton snow globe was found by user on Twitter, Dom Daddy LV. He goes by Scott. Yep, he went from Las Vegas to Nipton and got the snow globe. Of course, Carl's reported it was taken, so MB Carl went to go get it. Well, looks like uh, we got a scoreboard here. Carl won, Scott won. Mount Charleston. No one claimed it. Wouldn't be surprised if they kept it. I mean, the guy at the front desk said, you want to get the one I put there years ago. All right, well, let's hope they have that fallout party. Do invite Michael Dorn. The Strip, in honor of Project Enchilada, which is going to give us some neon signs. This one went unreported. You know, anyone could pick it up, take it. Our good buddy Carl tried to get it. He didn't find it. But hey, sidewalks in Las Vegas, on and off the street are busy, so... Yep, gets picked up. Unreported. The test site at the top of the world. Well, looks like uh, Las Vegas Books on Twitter paid the $29 fee to go up there. Well, $29, but such a satisfying prize. Congratulations to Las Vegas Books. The Mormon Fort, which I couldn't put in the Mormon Fort, but on Las Vegas Boulevard, again, this one was found by, well, all over social media as Sublime Death 420. She was glad to get it. Wow, her handle, Sublime Death 420, is the most Xbox Live sounding name I've heard. Anyway, congratulations. Well, it was a fun trip. Freeside on Fremont Street. Taken and unreported. You know, I walked her for around 15 minutes went to look at the snow globes and saw where I put it. It was gone. Yep, these snow globes are going by quick. Big MT at the weather station. This was taken quickly. And two guys on Instagram told me it was gone, including MB Carl. Well, unreported, but sought after. What an experiment. New Vegas at the Las Vegas sign. Well, I put it there not long after Big MT, and look who showed up, MB Carl. Hi there. Snow globe, snow globe. While I was making posts in the car, this guy found it. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll pick it up tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> going, you're gonna be at Hoover Dam? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, <laughs> well. Get someone else to shot. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Zion National Park at Zion Methodist Church. Well, looks like uh, MB Carl tried to get it again, but he was beat by Scott the Dom Daddy, who took it. Wow, looks again, our scoreboard. Two, two, and one. This is, man, doing the snow globe trip gets people to compete. Hoover Dam, unreported. I can imagine security taking it. They deserve it. Sierra Madre Casino at the Monte Lago. You know, I thought it would get snagged by an unsuspecting hotel guest, but our good buddy Sublime Death 420 made the trip with a friend to go get it. What a date night. Take a date to Monte Lago. Nellis Air Force Base during the air show. 
you know, I left it at that porta potty on the edge of the civilian perimeter, took a walk around the base, great walk, saw some great planes, dug some good people, and hey, when I came back, it was gone, unreported. Man, I'm surprised I didn't get arrested for being a suspicious person. Just a Fallout fan. Good Springs, final snow globe at the cemetery. Well, here's our winner. Better that. concludes our snow globe trip and yeah we got a scoreboard mb carl with three scott here with two sublime death with two and las vegas books with one well looks like nine of the snow globes were reported i say that's very good at least i got people to tell me they were gone so thank you to the people who saw my posts to go get the snow globes. You saw the posts. You saw that there was a quest to do. I'd like to add, Max, is that it, like when you get that collectible in the game, you have like that great emotional skull feel. That's what Max is actually doing yeah. in IRL because you're finding it. It is making part of the actual treasure hunt uh, and, and getting that exact same feel that you would have from the games. And because of that, you got to experience a part of the game like no other in real life. Thanks for playing. Whew. Not done yet. Uh, time for an epilogue. So, would I do it again? You know, I've done it three times. They were all good. It does take a lot of time and effort, money. I think I'm good here. I'm ready to stop at three. I never make guarantees, but I say, there's just no more reason, let it go. But while I may no longer be hiding things in Las Vegas, still a whole world out there. And whenever I get a chance, I wanna cover parts of those worlds with bobbleheads. But then in Fallout 3, 4, and 76, those all have bobbleheads, and to me, bobbleheads are in every city. Well, not gonna hide these uh, licensed ones, but 3D printed disposable ones. Oh yeah, this is something, uh, another project of mine, Bobblegeddon. So I 3D print these uh, snow, these bobbleheads here, and I uh, leave them around uh, uh, landmarks and cities. And so far, I've hidden bobbleheads in, well, Wasteland Weekend, then San Diego, then Los Angeles, then Phoenix, then San Francisco, and I made that glorious trip to Washington, D.C. I like posting them. I like what people have to say. Hey, and I do like it when those websites and outlets, you know, report on it. My Bible Geddon story was featured on a, a Gaming Bible, so if you do something interesting like that, you can, you can get featured on one of these blogs that that millions of people read. Yeah, so I keep getting press coverage whenever I do this. Oh, but bobblehead posts on Reddit, oh, they make people go nuts. Makes me feel like, you know, I'm impacting the world with this. But I say there's more to come. If I can go somewhere and bring the bobbleheads, I'll bring Bobblegeddon. So, why do I do it? Well, you know, I did say, have an adventure, be with the family, just good to see Vegas, many reasons. Let's see, uh, of course I could speak to a therapist about this. Uh, so, Doc, uh, you know, as you know, I make documentaries about hiding snow globes in Las Vegas and making bobbleheads and hiding them in cities. 
I mean, plenty of Fallout fans dress up, go to conventions like this, but I'm the only one who goes out of the way to really hide things over the course of days. Is there an explanation for this? So, in my mind, I think the explanation is you're a little bit crazy. Because he's going crazy! But also you want to give. You want to give of yourself to the community, to the world. And, but also, like, you're a little bit secretive. So you're hiding the things you create to give to the world. But mostly, I would say, just a little bit crazy. Crazy? Or I'm very passionate about what I love. But I suppose, you know, I just found something I'm good at. That's always a good feeling. And hey, just because I love Fallout, I do it for the love of Fallout. So yeah, there can be many reasons. I may not get around to saying them in this documentary, but no one answer. The adventure, the family, the people you meet along the way, for the love of the game, just being good at something. Anything else? So, am I the only one who does this? Well, when it comes to snow globes and bobbleheads, I'd say me. I met a guy who said he once went to Ukraine to leave a bobblehead behind, you know, as part of his trip. But sets of snow globes in Las Vegas and, and sets of 20 bobbleheads in a different city. So far, that's me. But, but leaving these items all around the world for people to find. Oh, that's been done long before me. Street artists have done that. Yeah, so I uh, went to Venice Beach because uh, a friend of mine uh, spray painted my uh, handle here on the uh, art installation here. But it's, it's, a, it's a public art installation and anyone can paint anything on it. So yeah, as soon as my friend painted my uh, handle here, someone painted over it. Maybe within a few hours. Well, well, I guess people like to leave their mark here. Especially an artist who's been featured in a documentary called Exit Through the Gift Shop called Invader. Invader is the guy from France who's traveled all over the world, leaving pictures of space invaders on walls for people to find in public places. Some of them come down, some people respect his art and leave it there. I could give a shout out to Invader. Uh, in 20, so Invader's an artist. I don't know his, I forget his real name. Uh, he's a street artist who would hide these invaders based on Space Invader. He, and they, he'd put them around cities, like he'd glue them to buildings. Uh, this uh, Invader here is the last one you can find. It's on 7th Avenue on the Salvation Army. He's become so well known, so popular, that he's being featured in art exhibitions. But why does Invader do it? Well, you can call it a hobby, he turned into a living, but in some ways, Space Invaders are his game. And so far, he's done over 4,000 Invaders, and he's got a high score. Well, 4,000 Invaders all over the world, that's a hard score to beat. So yeah, why Space Invaders? You know, from his website he says, bring the Space Invaders from video games and TV screens, bring them to our physical world. So, so yeah, he, so when he puts Space Invaders around, around the world, he's increasing his high score. He, say, he says they're the perfect icon of our time, a time where digital technologies are the heartbeat of our world. And you know, so far I've done, let's see, I've done 38 snow globes for the new Vegas trips, and so far 120 bobbleheads in, uh, Different cities. Well, that's my high score from what I'm doing. So why does Invi Invader do space invaders? Well, not just because he can make them out of Rubik's Cubes, but because it's an iconic video game image. A mascot, if you will, of an entire medium. Well, to me, Vault Boy is himself a mascot representing a video game. All right, well, I think Vault Boy is uh, another icon of our time. He represents, uh, you know, corporate mascots. Oh, what's good, what's, oh, what's good, what's good. Yeah, hey, uh, got any uh, Fallout, Fallout costumes? We do not, but we have a Pit Boy. Oh, really? Where? Oh, yeah, just those this year. 
Yeah, not that popular as yet. <laughs> oh, where is it? 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 Oh, uh huh. Look at all this stuff. Oh, here we go. Oh, uh -huh. mm. You guys said that uh -huh. before. You should play the game with you. I will. And Play four first. Four. Good. Yeah, four. Don't play the new one. Wait, like, can you do that again? It's, it's just gonna sound. Potato masher with real mashed potato. Oh. Oh man, that's dope. Anyway, I'll take a Fallout mystery box, please. Fallout mystery? Yeah. What's up, Internet? We got a boxing video here. That's right. Gonna unbox this. Fallout mystery box for the first time. Oh, what's in it? What's Vault Boy gonna give me? What? A Vault Boy planter? Oh, what could possibly be in this box? In the box. Wow, I can grow plants out of his head. Yeah, potatoes, multi fruits out of Vault Boy's head. Boy, am I lucky. What's this? Ooh, what vault is this? Vault Tech. Oh, a Vault Tech scarf. Oh, that'll look good around me. That'll keep my neck warm. And, you know, in Good Springs next November. Uh, looks like Culture Fly can give me a coupon for next time. Great. Ooh, this Endurance vinyl figure. Wow. Wonder if I kept buying these, how many figure, different figures would I get? An enamel pin that looks like an energy weapon. Zip, zip. Ooh, and a notebook so I can jot my, you know, notes when I go to school. Neat, but I'd rather keep it in mint condition. Oh uh, yeah, one vault boy, please. Is that Donald Trump? Uh, fallout fact. The design of Vault Boy was inspired by the Mr. Pennybags from Monopoly. So let's see. There's also artists like Banksy, who uses art to make statements. Of course, this doesn't always go as planned. There were the artists who work with Adult Swim to help promote the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie in Boston. I like to say be responsible. Maybe this... Uh, I think it could backfire. And then let's remember the uh, Boston Mooney Night Panic. Yep, we all remember that back in the 70s. So yeah, these artists were hired to promote Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, the movie. And uh, they put these uh, LED Mooney Night uh, uh, fixtures uh, in the subway. But, you know, they light up, they have batteries attached. That's kind of similar to an IED, and it shut down Boston for the day. Well, it seemed harmless. It's funny in hindsight, but in, this, in a post-9-11 world... Well, see something, say something, can't take the risk. And who knows if uh, what I'm doing with these bobbleheads and the snow globes there will spark such controversy. But here's the thing, you know, when, I, when I made that post on Reddit about my bobbleheads going to San Francisco, half of them were just, dude, you're littering. I know. It's a big game, isn't it? Well, is it by de littering by definition? Yes, but we have issues with littering because it's ugly, it, it affects the environment, it affects our drinking water, maybe our health. This isn't doing that. Well, I've been on Nellis Air, for Air Force Base looking like this, so I've been careful so far. So I'm still gonna hide bobbleheads, but hey, I know the risks. So besides, you know, the artists and the crazy people, there's also the game of geocaching. Just go on your smartphone, get started, join a community. Yeah, people say you geocache these, but uh, I want I want them to be, to be out in the public, like in the game. You just see it there. Geocaching, you put it in a box. 
I want it. I want them, to be, want them to be in plain sight. Well, making these two documentaries has been fun. Second half years of my life. But I'm going to move on from Lost New. There's nothing more to do in Lost New. I might do smaller videos. But ambitious narratives with snow globes? That's just... There's nothing left. It's been done. Twice. Well... It's been fun. Thanks to all the people along the way, people like David Schwartz, Enon Zur, all the voice actors, even the agents of actors who had to shoot me down because their talent wasn't available. You know, thank my parents, thank my friends, a lot of people behind me who supported me. You know, the people who make Fallout, the people who made New Vegas. It's a long list of credits of people to thank. Even the people from my past who had to put up with my antics. People in the present who still do. Now then, the Fallout franchise still has a great future. There's going to be a TV show coming up, and the next game, Fallout 5, is expected to... could be years. Maybe in the next decade. But you know what? Even if it's years, I'll still wait. And the next game could very well inspire another documentary. Well, the Lost New Project might be over for now. But hey, something's got to end. So I can start something new. Well, thanks for joining. So, so Max is doing a documentary on Fallout Vegas, correct? Hey, Busby, I got a story for you. That's awesome. Back to I want to give him his pin back, that's all. They wanted me to sign this. The Asian stuff is fascinating, but this guy's not connected with it.